Welcome to episode 44 of Both Down, the number one Blood Bowl podcast. From the land of the Longhorns, the Republic of Texas. I am Scott Prime, in the month of, the fifth month of the year Prime, and with me is my co-host, and near equal. He's really sick of hearing all this crap. It's only seven more months. I know. I'm Steve. Kilowoggy. Yay, Steve. Yay. What's up? Nothing. Doing the podcast finally. Maybe, (laughs) unless the weather uh, shuts us down. May in Oklahoma sucks. We had this scheduled three times now, and each time, it first time, we were watching the weather for tornadoes for about six hours. Second time, we had really bad lightning and like 60 mile an hour winds. Today, we think the rain is through, so... Hopefully we don't have any problem. Currently, it, the sun is shining, it's pouring down rain, and yeah. we can hear thunder. Thunder a lot, yeah. So, uh, without like, eh, it's just Oklahoma. Yeah. So, <clears throat> hopefully this works out, but that is why there might have been a delay. <laughs> Lots of delays. But, uh, we've, yeah, we've been dodging weather at least once a week, it seems like. just Yeah. At least enough to uh At least we've been dodging and, it. Right. Steve got the... Uh, he drew the lucky straw and got to uh, sit through a couple of uh, tornadoes at the house <laughs> with my children and my ex-wife while uh, I was stuck in the friendly town of Norman just south of us. Yeah, we had to go in the shelter, and Scott's kids were doing better than the ex. So, <laughs> To no surprise. Not at all. You'd be happy. Today they were talking about some of the things you taught them Good. during that night. And if you noticed, when Wakelin, or when Eden was asking about something on the TV at the very end, like, where are we? Uh, your ex was just like, come on, I gotta go. I want to get home before it rains. And then she stepped on a couple of villages, and the <laughs> Japanese people went fleeing. <laughs> Momzilla. It's pretty accurate. Well, let's not turn this into a bash cast of that we are we are way too blessed and happy for any of that but absolutely but the, even eden today was asking me dad can you show me where we are in the map yeah steve was showing us so you were teaching them and here it is a week and a half later and good they still remember now i got hell damage yeah even though i stayed down in a, a town south of moore because i couldn't get here because all the flooding I tried to come up here between storms, and every way I went, I oh, and a lot of people waters. probably don't know. So, what was that, May 6th, when we had the tornadoes come through? Um, I think so. Right, and we um, never really talked about the one in the end of March. No, it wasn't that big of a deal. It well, kind of was. We were in, I was in the shower when it hit. Well, yeah. But um, so, this one, May 6th, we have the tornadoes come through. Thankfully, they miss us. It takes out one of my friend's house, but... Him and the family were okay. Um, but we have the new phenomenon of flooding that we've never really had before in the past. It's like a new thing for Oklahoma where, yeah, we'll just completely flood over now whenever there's a giant torrential rainstorm come through. They showed a thing on the news showing here's some potential streets that are flooded. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at this and I see cars are stalled out and then i was like oh that's right by my house not just stalled out well okay, up they're, to they're, the roof and up water. to the roof stalled. yeah they're <laughs> in there and i'm like i've never seen that area that flooded before and you told me yeah, that this used, used to. to be a problem here and more there's, there's an underpass right by our, our house and it used to flood all the time but then they reinforced it and fixed the drainage issues and hasn't flooded since they redid it you know 15 years ago and this was over the top of cars. Yeah, so I drove up, yeah. and you you warned me about that. You oh, know, yeah. But I saw it, and so I was like, I'm going to go up north. Flooded. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll go down south and drive around. Flooded. One another mile. Flooded. One another mile down south. Oh, I think I could make it through there. So I drive my car through there, and about halfway through, I'm like, I start praying. I'm like, oh, God. This was yeah. a mistake. Please yeah, just you have let to me get pray. through this. This is not a good thing. Because just didn't just didn't feel right, you yeah. know. So I get through that, go over the hill. <laughs> There's a big giant gully area 
full of water. There's trucks stalled out. I'm like, <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> I'm not go. even trying that. So I was like, all right, uh, one more favor. Let me get through <laughs> this one. And I got through it and I went down to Norman and just called it a night. And then the hail hit me. So while you had to suffer in your own ways, mm-hmm. I got a bunch of hail damage on my new car. We also gave birth to a meme for about 15 minutes. Oh, of, yeah. uh, we had an, an animal wildlife park up by Tuttle that got hit. And they were talking about lions and tigers and bears possibly being loose. <laughs> so it became known as Tiger NATO. <laughs> right. So, T- tiger flood NATO. Right. And we had an earthquake earlier that day. So it's like earthquake, flood, tiger, NATO, whatever. Right. It was, yeah, Brian... Uh, the owner of Wizards is who I was staying the night with. Uh, he just died laughing when they came on, and they're like, "If you're in Tuttle <laughs> and you're near the uh, Wildlife Safari Rescue, uh, they advise to stay in your house. The owner can't get there. It looks like it's been hit. They're missing a couple of animals. They didn't say what, but everybody went thought tiger. It turned out to be just a couple of bears. Is that what really yeah. escaped? Well, they said that there was bears in there. There was. Lions and tigers. And mm-hmm. I, I remember the tigers because <laughs> back Everybody when I used did. to, when I worked at FedEx, though, we delivered out that way. So, yeah. yeah, the tigers were there. But yeah, everything. And then within an hour later, there was already, yeah, the picture memes that you were mm-hmm. talking about with the tigers and the tornadoes. It was so funny. It's pretty awesome. I don't know mm-hmm. who has the time to throw all this stuff together, but. A lot of people with no life. Well, kind of like people who sit around and do a podcast on a game that's dead 25 years. Or, or care so much about the uh, role playing side of something that's <laughs> not really worth it. So, speaking of that, we did have our finals as well for the Dragonfire Blood Bowl League. Yes, our season is almost complete for season nine. All we have left. Well, the is, actual season's complete. The season's done. The season playoff oh. playoff championships are done. Right. And now, just the little side tournament for the teams that didn't go to those playoffs. Uh, the NIT is left. Yeah. So, uh, do you want to talk about that? Eh. I wasn't involved, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I we... missed I missed my shot this year. Didn't have a ch- chance. Why not? You, um, had, you I... had an awesome Chaos Dwarf team. No, I'm just joking. I, I do have an awesome Chaos Dwarf team, and they sucked. <laughs> uh, so, the, the playoffs was um, in the Thorpe division. It was... Um, John Brees's um, winged human, winged winged human, uh, his Skaven team, the Drakenhof Bloodshanks versus the Hacken Slashers, which was a vampire team by and, Sarge, by our buddy Sarge, and uh, the Drakenhof team won in overtime, and they went on to face the champion of that division, which was the Giza Kings, or the Giza Kings, or have Giza, is it? Yeah, it's Camry team. Yeah, but he could pronounce it either way if he wanted to. If he wanted to, but the actual Pyramid of Giza is in Giza. Well, maybe he pronounces okay. it different. I don't it's know. It's possible. He always calls them the kings. Okay. So, whatever. Tomato, tomato, dude. That's by Scott Hess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Scott Hess beat him pretty soundly. I wasn't here for that game. From what I understand, it was 2 nothing. Game of attrition, uh, basically. Or ended up two to one, but it was mm-hmm. really two nothing most of the game. Yeah, and then um, it was a two nothing. I'm screwing around because there's no way you can win. Oh, you scored eh. right. So uh, Scott Hess, first time in our league, gets his Kimry team to the finals. And then um, on the Rozelle division, notice they're fluffy named divisions named after former commissioners in second edition fluff. Yes, people know, oh, okay. or they don't care. I'm just saying, maybe if you have divisions, maybe <laughs> you should name them something. More than Manny, Manny Mo and Curly or whatever it is. Maybe. Okay. Maybe not. Fair enough. <laughs> Just a slight dig on somebody else, maybe. They don't even care, though. You made that dig when they were here. Oh, did I? Yes. Yeah. I like to dig. Okay. I, I carry a shovel. Anyways. <laughs> um, then the other Skaven team in the uh, Rozelle division, the uh, Skyrim Sabregatos versus the... Uh, Tio Tika Titans, which was a Lizardman team. Uh, the Skaven team won. So it was the Bator Blackhawks versus Black Hearts <laughs> versus um, the Saber Gatos. And, and the Black Hearts are your Chaos Pack team. My Chaos Pack team, the, the Barroom Brawlers. 
And um, we won in – that one went into overtime. Mm-hmm. Uh, almost in the, almost double overtime. I won on the last play through a goblin to win the game. Yeah, you basically whittled Allen's team down. He was down to four people. Yeah, I, I beat beat him up pretty bad. And then um, the finals, uh, the finals were the finals. <laughs> I got my come up, and so I got beat up too. Yeah, the Kings, have, they pretty much ended up doing the same thing that Scott did to Allen's team. Although I did hurt a lot of his guys. I had six casualties against him. Oh, yeah, you did. He had, Minotaur was going nuts. He had five against me. Uh, he regened some of those. I had six casualties against him. Um, his roster was, he had 14 guys to begin with, and I only had 13. And I couldn't recover my knockouts. And yeah. so it went into overtime like, I think it was eight on 11. Something. Or seven on 11. Seven on 11 sounds right. Something like that. It, it got so desperate in the overtime. He scored, and I had a few plays left that the only guy I could get out into open field was a Minotaur. Mm-hmm. And I was contemplating. Well, actually, I you tried. Did try a pass. Eventually, to him. I had to like try to pass it to him, and um, my guy for agility fumbled. It. <laughs> <laughs> so that was like his third fumble of the day, too. Yeah. So it is what it is. I, I got beat two to one in the finals. Uh, still, still a good run for the Chaos Pack team. So, um, you know, yeah. Mr. Sh- Sean Stevens, big sexy. He kind of came up with kind of the name and the I- helped me with the idea I had. Yeah, and he even named some of the players on the team. So I appreciate that. And Alan came out w- with third in the Rat Rumble. Yeah, that was a four to one victory. He dominated the game. Yeah. So uh, he he finished third. Uh, John Brees finished uh, fourth, fourth, which is still good out of sixteen teams. Yes, yeah. and uh, congratulations to Scott Hess. And we're there's a good chance he'll be on a future podcast just to talk about just to rub it in. Uh, not really to rub it in, just to get his experience on, you know, kind of our deal. Like we yeah. have new players with the random skills, and you know, just and talk how about ca- the league. second time Camry won the first time they came out because they have good built-in skills. I'm still not convinced of that. Well, we'll see when I play next season with Kemri. <laughs> I don't think you would do that. Two separate teams of Kemri. <laughs> then I'm going to play two separate teams <laughs> of Kemri. Which is then if everybody if 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 everybody does that, then we, the champion will be a first season Kemri team. Which proves your theory. Uh huh. <laughs> Unless you bring back the Washington Deadskins. I might. By the way, they they beat the. <laughs> <laughs> they beat the Kings in the Kings Cup preseason tournament. So, oh, they did, didn't they? I forgot about that. <laughs> the Blackhearts also beat them in the Alcorn Cup. So it was actually a rematch of the Alcorn Cup. Doesn't matter, though. No, I would switch the Alcorn Cup over the yeah. Track and Fire Blood Bowl League. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. And your Fumble League's been going well, I hear. Um, It's going okay. I've tied a few games recently, but I... Um, I played uh, Alex Stymie. Mm-hmm. Um, he of the Taco Bell packets. Yeah, he he, he who wants to marry me. Right. Uh, good, great player. Uh, we played each other um, the Saturday last Saturday, and that game I felt like I was in control like the whole game except for two plays, and in those two plays he scored and we tied one to one. But I think he's undefeated. I think he's only had a few ties. Which, That's a- Good he, thing he, to do then. He's had a really good season too with his uh Lewis High Elves. Yeah, so. as for me, uh or I've Pro done Elves, something like that. Jack and Diddley with Blood Bowl. Besides getting stuff ready for Oklahoma Bowl. Nice. I'm hoping if I looked at all what's left of the NBFL, I think if I win one out of my last two games, I lock in a a division title. Cool. I I think um, the standings are not up to date, but I d- kind of did that. Or if another guy loses, then I think I still that still happens. So I'm kind of hoping he'll just lose that way. I don't <laughs> have to put the pressure on me. <laughs> but, Always looking for the easy way in. Well, hey, you take it how you can take it, right? Yeah, any port in the storm. <laughs> That's right. Was Vanilla Ice would say, any hole's a hole. <laughs> Is that what he really said? I have no idea, but, you know. That's the urban legend, right? Yeah. It's... It's a credo you've uh, followed your whole life, though, right? Sure, why not? I mean, if it's good enough for... Party. Rip Van, what's his name? Rob Van Winkle? Rob Van Winkle. 
Yeah, then it's good enough for you, right? Yeah. Holes and trees and picnic tables and pool outlets. Pool outlets? Mm-hmm. Like a jet. Oh, well. Or an intake. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> so what else has been going on with you? Nothing. How's life? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> life is life. Working a job you hate to make money that you can spend on Blood Bowl, you know. Have you? Do you have every collectible yet? No. Not yet. No. Getting close. I've actually not bought anything in a while. I noticed that. After my last experience of giant cluster with eBay and getting a whole bunch of cool so stuff, ma- the, the guy sends it to the wrong guy. The mailman asked me if my roommate moved out. Mm-hmm. Sure. He's like, I haven't dropped off a package in a while. Did your roommate move out? Is that I, code? No? That's a gay joke on me. Never mind. Take that back. Yeah, I think it's a code. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was hitting on you. Well, oh, you need to drop a package. <laughs> be like, maybe I do. Let <laughs> me go get it. I might need some help. Mm-hmm. But, oh, if anyone has an opinion, should Oklahoma be March, was it 9th next year? Or like oh, we're doing this now? mid-April. I don't know if anyone has a particular... Sure. Some I think we're going. Opinion. I think we're deciding on early March. So he, yeah, let's look ahead here. Let's just you, you you waste some time here while I get ahead. Wasting time with a monotone song. Hey, uh, hey, now it sounds kind of racist. <laughs> All right, so we can do the the first week of March, which is March fifth, or we could do I feel March. Like there's something else going on then. Um, could be snow. We had snow last well, year. Well, that's true. This year. Um, we could do the second week of March, which is Daylight Savings Time. Right, which I think is what we're leaning to, even though Daylight and Saving we, Time we, sucks. We can't do the 19th, we can't do the 26th, and we can't do the 2nd for Easter, WrestleMania, and Pinball Festival. Mm-hmm. So our dilemma is, do we do it one of those, or do we bump it up into April, which could conflict with a fellow Texas tournament known as Rock Cup. Which we might be talking about in this episode. We might talk about it. I don't We're know. totally talking about this episode. And then it's also storm season. <laughs> eh, it's not too bad of storm season, though. No. I say that. I know that. Yeah. But <laughs> we're all going to be inside a little tiny bathroom. Mm-hmm. No, I, I'm not really worried about the storm season either. It's just, do we fit it in before Adepticon so yeah. people can come out and go do both? Or How do we do this? Things are kind of leaning towards early March, probably the weekend of the daylight savings time. But you have big plans for this Oklahoma Bowl. Yeah. We're going to get 50. We're going to have a, we're going to make a cu- custom beep and uh, probably do a custom beep. Oh, so you're not really going to tell people what it is? Not yet. Got to finalize stuff. I thought this was the episode where we talk about that beep. No, it wasn't going to be. Oh. It's just asking about dates. What about the little shiny beep? Can we talk about that? <laughs> if you, you can talk about whatever you want. I don't care at this point. I don't think anything's going to change. Okay. So yes. there, there could be a rumor. We need about... two things to get designed first before I should say anything. Okay. So... We'll just flip around on that until see what happens. Flip the script and reverse it. Right. So what are we going to talk about in this episode? Um, uh, I thought we were almost done. Okay, well, this is going to be a special quick episode, and then now wait. People tell me. We should you, just do that. You hear it on all the time. People go like, I like short podcasts. It's like, I don't, because where I work, I, there's not enough time in the day for me to stop listening to podcasts. Um, I know some people just one have of a my, short commute or whatever, but yeah. golly, every, every Blood Bowl podcast can be three hours, and I'd be happy with that. And come one, out once a week. One of the podcasts I listen to is called Hardcore History, and it comes out like three or four months in between. And a new one came out, and it was four and a half hours long or so, and I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I got through it in like one day, and I'm like, no. I started listening to Old Art of Wrestlings with Colt Cabana. Yeah. And... Before, in about three weeks, I'm probably going to be caught up on every episode. Mm-hmm. 
So desk uh, jobs suck, huh? Pretty awful. Better than working the field, though. Mm, per, yeah, I guess. So this episode, we are going to talk about some Rock Cup. We traveled down to Rock Cup. Yep. We played took, in some Rock Cup. Took good old Michael Lewis with us. Who? Tulsa Michael. Oh, the racist. No, he's not racist. He used the term brownstone. To refer to the brownstone buildings. <laughs> I'm just saying what <laughs> was said. I'm not... Whatever. Your in-jokes do not appeal to fans of the podcast. <laughs> they're going to get it too, though. No. Oh, yeah, they are. No, they're not. They're they're going to... Next tournament, if you see him at like a 3 dot brawl, or you see him up at um, Chaos Cup, just go pat him on the back and go, you racist. Or Emerald City, or and the he, Diablo Cup. Well, uh, any of those places. Yeah. I'm talking about big... T- I'm talking internationally. Uh, so anyways, we gotta, we're got we going to do a first segment talking about... Oh, yeah. I was, about? We're going to talk about some, not really second edition skills, but what if... We li- took a concept from the second edition and brought it to the third, or the uh, third. I'm an idiot. Third, fourth, fifth, fifth sixth, 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 whatever this is the now. The rule book, yeah. the CRP. Yeah, we're going to we're going to just kind of like theorize what what would About it be skill like levels. if uh we took a pulled Jervis Johnson from second edition and gave him the current rule book and said just adjust this to make it more of a second edition like specifically skill levels. Right. Yeah. And then we're going to talk with um the creator and the TO, the tournament organizer. That'll be the, the last segment. I'm sorry. We're having Michael on second. Wow. Because we're going to talk about going down to the Rot Cup, how we did, because we played. And then the last segment, we'll have Matt McMahon on. And then we'll have Matt McMahon on, the T.O. of Rot Cup. Yes. Matt McDonough himself. Yeah, he's run it three years in a row. But we'll talk to him about that a little bit. So if you have nothing else to say, Steve, let's take a short break. Rutabaga. Okay. You feel better? Yes, I do. All right. Rutabaga. 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 It's a, it's a vegetable. Rutabaga. Anyways, we'll be back with the next episode. Both Down is brought to you by Wizards Asylum, your premier source for comics and games in Norman, Oklahoma. Check them out online at their new home, wizardsnorman.com. All right, we're going to discuss some, um, I guess it's going to be like some second edition ideas in the current version of Blood Bowl, which is impossible to do, but hey, why not? It's not impossible. It's, it's just, it's more of an intellectual idea. Before we move on, did you know today was uh, the birthday of Biggie Smalls? I don't think it matters anymore if, if, since he's dead. Oh, I know that, but on the backspin station on XM Radio, they were celebrating his birthday. And I've heard more Biggie Smalls songs today than I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, I can imagine. And I think I've heard three. Any good? Mm, I mean, I don't... Yeah. It's kind of like Selena. If Selena hadn't got killed, no one, nobody would care. She was big in the Latin community, but she never would have crossed over. Yeah, I mean... I. Maybe because I'm just too white that the yeah. small's never connected to me. But we are pretty white. I am pretty white. Anyways. You're much more of a Wu Tang Clan man. <laughs> Red man. Right, right, yeah. right. I bring this up because Big E was around some years after my uh, excursion through the second edition Blood Bowl. See how I brought that Oh, back I around. thought you were going to say like there's a star player called Big E that you rolled up one time. <laughs> no. Um,. So I, I was thinking about like old school skills and, and how, how they used to level. They used to have levels. So for example, there was a block table and you would roll two six sided dice because there wasn't block dice and then you would compare it. And like an eight was both down. So everybody, both people would fall over. Now, if you had block skill, mm-hmm. block one, 
versus, and your guy had no block skill. Right. I would just add one to my dice roll. Therefore, if I rolled an eight, then plus one is a nine, and I knock you over. So it's basically giving you an advantage. Right. Which is mostly what these level ups do, which is obvious. Right. So if you had a guy that had block two and Mm -hmm. I had block one, then I would actually, you knew block better than me, so you would get a plus one. Okay. Or I'd get a minus one when I try to block you. So I could roll the dice and I've rolled a 10. Now is, I don't know exactly how the old school worked. So was it actually adding one to your roll and adding two to my roll? Or is, was there two no, no, rolls no. going on? It was just one no, roll? No, it was or? just, if I was blocking you, I would roll the D6s. Okay. And if you but, had block two and I had block one. It'd be minus one? When I rolled the dice. Okay. And when you rolled the dice, you would get add plus one. Okay. Okay. And b- looks like block could go up to 10. Level 10, right, which is crazy. Yeah. The thing about. Um, so I was just thinking, like, <clears throat> using our block example, not every skill you could maybe do this with since there is block dice. But what if, like, you had a dwarf team playing a Norse team, mm-hmm. current rules, and you had the options to take things at a higher level. Therefore... Maybe I had two uh, dwarf blockers with their first skill. I, I went ahead and chose block level two as my skill instead of guard. Right. And obviously, I know you take guard. But I'm saying <clears throat> if you played in a league where these rules were kind of amalgam together, where you did have levels, mm-hmm. uh, I thought I just thought that might be kind of an interesting thing of like how would that change our current game of Blood Bowl? Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, there's not going to be a level 10. But no. let, let's say there was block level 1, 2, and 3. But, I mean, and, you could legitimately, if you wanted to take every skill up, a block. Was that six skills? Mm-hmm. Why not have it cap at or six? Seven, yeah. Yeah, whatever. I mean. Right. So it was it was just a, a in theory thinking. Because like, right. I used to joke with people like, you know, like, oh, do you have block and dodge? And I was like, oh, well, you can only tackle me if you have super block. Mm-hmm. And, you know, then they go, what's that? And I was like, well, you have to roll two pals, you mm-hmm. know. So this would be a way to, like, instead of a lot of those stalemates of, ah, oh, both down. Nah, we both have block. And we yeah, we just on. stand there. You go, what's your block level? Mm-hmm. I actually got two. So you go down, sucker. Well, I'll re-roll, you know. Hmm. In theory. Yeah. You know, because one would keep you up over the other. And if they were equals, then it was just a standoff. Um, there's like catch had a level that you would, uh, roll for a missed throw. Yeah. Um, I really don't remember how that worked. It said if the ball thrown to the player is missed, this is from the second edition campaign book, roll a D six and add that player's level with this skill to the roll. If the total is seven or more, the result is treated as caught. So therefore you rolled your two D six right. to see if it was caught. And if it didn't, then you had this extra chance. Okay. So you had a 50, 50 chance if you had catch level one. And if you had catch four, you were a pretty awesome catcher. Okay. That makes sense. Um, it had dodge here. Same, same thing. Uh, but back, back then, but really was, back then you didn't have a choice. Everything was, was random. Like we do. That is correct. So, from what I'm looking at in that book, you know, this is, I guess, making star players because did they level up at the time? Or was this just for star player creation? Uh, this was like, well, when we had this book, we actually, like, we thought everybody got skills. So right. we, you know, if you look at the page before, you could roll two D6s and determine if you got, you know, how many uh, rolls on the uh, star player table right. and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah. For like three games, we played with everybody had multiple skills, mm-hmm. like one to seven, you know. And then we read like, oh, you have to earn star player points to get skills. And then so the league kind of got recreated about two or three times okay. before, <laughs> amongst our 16-game season. Um, you know, so, and, and dodge worked a little bit different, too, because back then you blocked people and you tackled the ball carrier. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, how block and block would play off each other. Dodge and tackle would work the same way. If I had tackle three and you had dodge two, I'd get the plus one to tackle you. Okay. Makes sense. Right. And if you had dodge three and I had tackle one, you got the, I had to minus one from my dice roll. Yeah. It was the same type of blocking chart, but no block dice. So do you think, (laughs) could you even envision that people like, what'd you take with your guy? Well, I went ahead and 
He's important, so I gave him block two, you know. I can't imagine that anybody would do that. But maybe to specialize in a skill. See, I was thinking more along the lines of something like you can upgrade Leap to Heroic Leap. Because in the second edition, Heroic Leap was you could leap three squares if you're going into the end zone. That just gave you a little bit more variety. Mm-hmm. So that would be in, more more like a, instead of just leveling up one or two, mm-hmm. it's more like a, a skill branch. So wow. if you have kick, you, you can, can take either, uh, what was it, long kick they or long, up and under? They, uh, yeah, they have an up and under skill. So long kick, it would add dice or add squares to how many you kicked. Right. You were limited by how many squares you could kick the ball. Oh, okay. Uh, I think it was 20 squares. I, I guess I could look it up right here. Yeah, it's not that big a deal. Yeah, but, and you could go up to 23 squares with oh, one okay. kick. But yeah, the up and under was pretty interesting because you roll, and if you get the right roll, the ball doesn't come down until either the end of the receiving player's turn, or if it's a really good roll, it doesn't come down until the end of my turn. Are you talking about the up and under skill? Up and under, yeah. Right. So when I brought this up to you, and you thought this would be a cool segment, you thought it was more like a branch out of Yeah, I was thinking things. more of the skill trees. So you should to be... get Leap first, and mm-hmm. then you can upgrade to, to heroic, heroic leap, leap. Or maybe That's just... interesting. Or, you know, you get Catch first, and then you can go to Intercept or mm-hmm. something like that. That'd also be interesting. It feels kind of more like a role-playing game where you had to right. develop those things. Like maybe you had to have Wrestle first before you learned how to block. See, that would be cool. Because then you you kind of combat this whole problem of people just picking the skills, which I guess is not a problem since everybody plays that way. But right. you know you're not going to so easily be able to do claw palm if you have to get you know uh, block first and then mighty blow and then or what I don't know. Well, when I thought of this at work, I was you know thinking about like what skills to take, and I was just like, man, what if these things had levels? How would that change the tournament scene? Like. It would be well, interesting for like. Leap. I figured there's going to be a lot of bashing, so uh, I upgraded two of my guys to block two, just because I figured yeah. the other guy wouldn't waste the skills. With oh, okay. His work team or something like that, but it'd be kind of interesting not for leap, but for like very long legs. If you could do that, like very long legs too, so it's always adding two to your rolls. Right. That'd be neat. It'd be. It's just an interesting uh, yeah. thought to the process. I you mean, do that with safe pass. And- yeah, I mean, Intercept had a level back then. Kick had a level. Leap had a level. Long Kick had a level. Yeah, a lot of things did. I mean, they even had luck back then. I mean, I th- I'm And Spellcaster. Because sure. you can get Spellcaster up to four, and then you would get four spells at the beginning of the game. Right. Which would be so cool. Now, I think Lux... I mean, Lux pretty much like Pro, except... Yeah. Pro, there's no limit to how many times you can re-roll it once per turn. But Luck was like a personal uh, re-roll that player had. So if he had Luck 1, he had one re-roll per game just for him. Oh, okay. But you didn't have to roll for it. It wasn't a 50-50 chance. It yeah. was just one and done. And if you had Luck 4, you got four re-rolls for that one player. Jeez. I think Griff had Luck 4, Luck 3. A lot of little star players had some their own personal luck with them. That'd be crazy. It was a crazy game back then, my friend. Let's see uh, if we're looking at if we're looking at the skills now. Block, we already discussed how that would work. Dauntless, you could essentially take Dauntless and just add to your dice rolls. You could. Same yeah. with Dirty Player. I mean, with the with the mechanic now, where yeah. everything's at one d six, and one's a fail and six is always a success, you could, in theory, if you had levels, you, might- you could always have a chance that something's going to fail. Yeah, that's true. Um, back then, you could uh, actually try to rip the ball out of somebody's hands without um, having the skill strip ball. Mm-hmm. So there was a strip ball skill that you added to that roll to strip the ball. Oh, okay. So anybody could strip the ball, but if you had strip ball, you could do a add that. And if you had sure hands, you decreased your chance of somebody trying to strip the ball out of your hands. It wasn't right. uh, automatic. No, it's impossible. It's more of a you or like now it's an automatic if unless you have sure hands right yeah right and yeah you already talked about spell caster there was a toughness skill back then that had different levels which took away from the die roll on injuries right right uh 
Subtract this player's toughness level from any injury table roll he makes. If this brings the score to a total below zero or below two, the injury has no effect. A roll of 12 before modification always results in this player being killed. Morg had like toughness four, I think. So he always minus four from his rolls. So you could never casualty him. Not unless you roll the double six. And then you just straight up kill him. Right. Jeez, that sucks. Pretty brutal. Pretty pretty brutal stuff. Uh, there was a save throw that had levels. And in our current game, you could say like, oh, I, I'm going to roll the intercept. I got it. Well, I'm going to roll my save roll. Well, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I have a, what's your level? My level of intercept actually is three. Oh, well, my save throw is one. I can't re-roll it. Or something like that. I don't. Know. I don't see anyone ever taking either one of those. <laughs> I know that. That's the that's bad the thing. problem. But these were skills back back way back when, and uh, right. just an interesting thought. The block thing to me just seems like it would be very interesting if you know going to Chaos Cup, and you know a lot of teams are going to have block, and if you had an opportunity to override their block with your block, but what if you took like a war dancer and gave it block three and dodge four? You know. Right. Just give it the ball and it's almost impossible to take down. Well, that's true. With the block dice, yes. Yeah. Unless you I mean, if it wrestle. Gave it. But. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I like your idea, though, with this skill branch. I think that the more I think about it, the more it would be kind of neat. Because you have to get pass first, and then you can get accurate, or you could get safe throw, or you could get uh, dump off. Well, Something I- like that. So instead of... Picking really, f- you know, not really finesse skills, but really good skills off the bat, you have to earn your way into them. That is interesting. Maybe we need to save this for a future segment where, like, what if everybody was a generic lineman? Yeah. And then they, they you, hit that first tree of, like... Well, that is kind of what the uh, the second edition does. When, you, when it was creating a star player... Because you had to roll on the table to see what type of uh, position they'd be. Right. Yes. In, in the old star player generation system is you rolled on the... They had good race table, a chaotic race table, and a large monster. So you picked one of those tables and you rolled. And then uh, you went from there. Right. So, But then, when once you decided what you were, like say you want to be a Slon star player... Right. Then you roll 2d6, and an 11 through 42 would be a lineman. 43 to 54 would be a catcher. And then 55 through 66, oh, sorry, 55 to 62 would be blitzer. And anything in the 60s, 63 and up, would be choose. So I guess you could choose which position you wanted. Right. So pick one. I got some dice. I'll here. pick one? Yeah, sure. Um,. Uh, Let's make a star player real quick. Okay, let's just do Dark Elf. No, so chaotic team table. Huh? The chaotic team table, right? Oh, just team start out to begin with? Yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah, chaotic. All right, so we got a 66. 66. Large monster counts as two players. Roll on the table below. Okay, so a 21. 21 is an ogre blocker. All right, so then we're going to go over here. See how many uh, skills he has. 33, which is three skills. Okay. And then we're going to go over here to uh, page 14. So, since he's an ogre, what is a blocker? Mm hmm. He can take in any skill, any player's skill, or a blocker skill, right? Uh, yes, I believe so. You must roll on the race tables, see above. Which race? Roll a d6 on the result of one foot four. Roll on the race table. The star player's dislike towards race. Skill from all the other skill tables. Roll a d6 to see which skill table to use. The any player skill table kind of sucks. Well, I guess luck's there. What's self-control? Is that where you can ignore animosity and stuff? That's correct. And ignore dislike. But that's where you can get your itchy feet. You can get loyal. Which I don't know what that is. 
luck random. Well, one of the right. Well, since we got a we got a blocker, so yeah. Let's just go the, with blocker skill table. We're on the blockers here, so we got a fifty-five, which is a thick skull. We get a forty-two, which is a strength plus one. Nice. And then we get a thirty-three, which would be mighty blow. So boom. And m- then we have to roll the level, right? Because it has a max level of four. And he would have a mighty blow level three. So we'd have an ogre blocker with plus one strength, thick skull, and mighty blow three. That's correct. Kind of like that. It's <laughs> not bad. And and what you could do if for some reason if you had uh, let's say you had five skills mm-hmm. and you rolled a mighty blow and you got mighty blow one, you could eat one of your skills to up at a level. Yeah. Because I had a, a player that had mighty blow four just because I was like I'm gonna make this guy if he hits it's amazing and if he doesn't hit no big deal. Right. So, and I believe some players came with certain skills. Um, let's see, all ogres get throw teammate. They already get mighty blow level two, and then toughness level two. So technically, I'd have mighty blow four. Right. Nice. From what from what I remember. Yeah. So yeah, he's a pretty awesome ogre with six strength and two agility. But the agilities were different back then too. Yeah. Like two was bad. Two's still pretty bad. Two's bad, but I mean, not like today's standards of. All right, so the charts are different. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, <clears throat> so what we've decided is more than likely it wouldn't work too well in the new rule system. <laughs> well, of course it wouldn't. It worked better because previously you used more dice rolls for everything. Oh yeah, the, this thing was chart heavy on stuff, just yeah. like. All old uh, Games Workshop games. And, and probably a lot of them that still are that way. Yeah, that makes sense. But. It was fun to think about. Like like I said, if you had a chance. But we do the skill tree thing. That could be, that could prove interesting. Right. Start off just regular. You can choose a position, but then once. Like you can choose a, a thrower. But they don't come with any skills. Yeah, maybe maybe not. Hmm. But that kind of sucks because then the first skill they're going to take is probably pass. Yes, yeah, everybody gets that. Well, of course. And play or, may, or maybe there's generic ones like for a human. Yeah. Maybe there's like um. Maybe like maybe a team starts off all linemen, and then when you get your first skill, you roll like a random thing to decide which path they go on. Yeah. And it could be wrestle, so they stay in like the lineman area. It could be block and they head head the or guard and mm-hmm. then they head down the blitzer path and catch so they head down the catcher's path and then pass they head down the thrower's path hmm. or something like that. I mean, it's just yeah. an idea we could throw around at a later date. Sure, but I just when it came to tournament builds, I really was just really like meta gaming. Like, who would if you could take levels on block or dodge, who would do it and why? And I could see you as like I said, a dwarf or a Norse team when you really wanted to get an extra advantage. Yeah. You know, on the other Norse or dwarf. I could see like an all four under getting blocked two. Right. Or um like I said, Slon, give them very long legs, two or three. Right to even make him more efficient mm-hmm. at that stuff. So. Jump up two. So can you imagine an elf with even a better chance at leaping away? No. <laughs> I, I don't like crazy. that idea. So anyways, that was my little idea. I just wanted to kind of throw it out there and discuss with you. And, you know. And it's interesting. Look back at the old uh, second edition skills. It's always fun to get that book out and then enjoy the old times. Anything else you want to cover on this one? Nah. You got it? We're going to we're gonna start playing second edition? No, blah, blah, blah. no, no, no. Just no. one league. We'll just God, get, no. we'll grab one more friend. I don't think we'd have any friends after that. And we'll play a 16 game season. <laughs> <laughs> 40, 40 teams like it was meant to be. Okay. And we'll share the 40th team, you know, every other game. That makes It'll sense. just be three of us, and we'll just play each other so bad that it'll be awful. Okay. All right. Sounds great. I call the Arctic Crack Spiders. Oh. Meh, meh. All right. Hey, right. We'll be back with who we got, Michael, coming up. We got Mr. Michael Lewis.
And for this segment, we're going to be talking about our trip to Rock Cup. And with Scott and I is our good brownstone friend, Michael Lewis. Hey, everyone. Steve, what? thank you. What? Because if I was going to bring us in, I was going to call him, and it's Mr. Brownstone himself, oh, Michael Lewis. Jeez. We did that without talking. Michael, how you doing, buddy? Oh, my goodness. Am I getting a new jersey with that on the back of it? I don't know, dude. We could. We don't because want to... you could do Prime, I could do Kilowoggy, and he could do Brownstone, and Alan could be Tripnip. Oh, that's, I don't, I, I'm we, not liking. I'm not, not having a problem with this idea. We were talking about getting jerseys made. We were, and I, I really want Michael <laughs> to change his NAF ID to something else because his one is so long. Can can who, oh yeah? Who do you contact to change it? Well, anyways, we can talk about that. Later. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You don't have to do everything we say, Michael. No, I've, I wanted to change it, though, but I just said, ah, it's probably easier this way. <laughs> yeah. So how you doing, buddy? Uh, doing good. We we are nice and wet up here in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> so are we down here. <laughs> and so is the whole state. The I think the drought is officially over for this year. I, I would hope so. The The south of us, Michael, is getting plummeted with even more water as we speak. Oh my goodness! I mean, just I looked at the radar and it's just recycling over and over those same yep. areas. But luckily, we're it's not raining now here, so uh, we need to record as much as we can. Exactly. Before the storms hit, we've again. had this scheduled a couple of times, as we said prior, and tornadoes and lightning got in the way. But you're here now, so we can record what we need. Sweet. All right. So what did we do? We got together on the Friday before Rot Cup. Right. We got together fairly early. With your buddy, Robert. Yeah, Robert came along with us, and we uh, loaded up the car and headed down to Texas. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I remember correctly, we had a slight detour around the border because there was a big storm coming. Oh, yeah. We went to the casino for a few hours. We went to the casino for what was supposed to be an hour. You can't just go in that place for an hour. (laughs) If you don't know the Windstar Casino, it is the world's largest casino. For real? Largest gaming floor. Yeah. Is it? Wow. Okay. Wow. It's massive. I did not know that. Yeah. Well, anyways, so we went in there, and I, Michael, you never been, right? No, nope, that was my first time. Yeah, because you wanted to wander around to all the different... Yeah, and we stopped because the weather was pretty... It was kind of cloudy and gloomy and rained a little bit on the way down, but there was about to be a real bad patch just coming through. So we stopped at the casino to wait it out, and wait definitely waited it out. I think we were there for what two and a half, three hours. Yeah, the night I, I finally Just, go. Wow, guys, it's uh, fifteen till two, and they're like, "What?" <laughs> what? And it was like eleven. When yeah, we it's like we were just going to have lunch there. And they're like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> so then we had to hoof it on down to Austin, and we ate at Muya's on the way. Muya, isn't it? Yeah, that's what we ate, right? That was on the way down there, wasn't yeah. it? Hamburgers yep. and chocolate milkshakes. I think Michael found that. Did did you not see that? That was a uh, Robert. Oh, Robert saw that. It was a. Um, it kind of reminded me of for those people who go to Five Guys. It reminded me of that, but it was better. Yeah, it's like a classy yeah. version of Five Guys with quality <laughs> ingredients and people who have paid attention to what you order. Yes, so it was very good. I think we all were very satisfied. Yeah, with absolutely. Our, our food. And, and was then, that the manager that came around too later on? Making yeah. sure everything was okay. and Yeah, he, he tried to tell me that there was one in Oklahoma City, but what he meant was in Lawton in Tulsa. <laughs> but we found oh. out there were how many in Africa? Or was there a couple in Qatar or Saudi or something? There, I think he was saying there was going to make four or five in the Middle East somewhere yeah. pretty soon. Just an odd concept, but... Wow. Well, Mooya. Interesting. Mooya! So, great meal. And then we uh, traveled on down to, I think we... Bucky's. Oh, okay. We stopped at Bucky's. So the story goes like this. Brad has always brought us things like Bucky's Nuggets or uh, Cheese Puffs or whatever from this. They're just called Bucky's brand. And I, I didn't know they were like a chain of largest gas stations ever created. Right. It's a gas station travel plaza type place. And they're huge. Yes. And they had all sorts of crazy food, all sorts of candy, and 
I didn't want to spend all my money that day, afternoon, but I was like, we got to come back. We, we were tempted. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely tempted. So we stopped there for a little while, and uh, if I remember right, we just headed all the way, rest of the way to Austin. Yeah. Met up with the guys for pizza, well, we, for dinner. We, we stayed over at K-Raff's house, mm-hmm. Kent Raffrey, and um, He's very nice to let us stay there again. Yeah, he, he showed us his cool paint models and all that stuff. Now, Michael, you can chime in any time here, buddy. That's why you're on this podcast. Well, I was going to mention that uh, it was very, he has very comfortable couches. <laughs> yes, he does. He has very comfortable couches. Scott Thanks, and Robert Kent. got Thanks, to Kent sleep the together. Couch. The bed's pretty good, too. Yeah, me and Robert got to sleep together. It was it was amazing. It's Just been, like the old days? Yeah. it's. I probably slept with that guy at least 50 times, if not more. But something you do, right? Yeah, I guess so. With a close friend. Yeah, wouldn't know. <laughs> Speaking of someone to sleep with somebody, Kent's cats <laughs> wanted to hump Steve's shoes. Oh, my God. Yes. Apparently, my shoe has some type of pheromone that the cat was just drawn to. The one cat wanted to hump your shoe and make love to it and marry it. And I'm used to cats, you know, rubbing up against shoes or, you know, wanting to be around them or whatever. This one's just like getting his head in there. Just like, oh, yeah, it's my shoe. I think you could uh, maybe get your pheromones from your feet. Maybe you could sell it as like a new catnip or something. Dude, <laughs> that would be amazing. Process. Well, what was funny Campbell is... Campbell Nip. One cat wanted to hump your shoe. The other cat wanted to piss it. <laughs> right, because he wants to be humped by the other one. So it was a jealousy thing. I know what it was, but it was so <laughs> funny that... That other cat was like, I oh, really love this shoe? Well, I'm going to pee in it. And he'd go over there and try to squat on it. <laughs> uh, speaking of peeing on things, are we going to talk about the stuff we talked about on the way down? Or are we going to leave that out? I think um, we'll have to save that for another podcast. Are you talking about like the last two hours of the trip? <laughs> Michael, do you remember that? Our money-making movie ideas? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that... that um... Yeah, we should probably say. Wait a minute. I thought we were going to keep that on the kibosh until oh, we, we, we created should. the idea and made our hundreds. That, that's true. If, yeah. Yeah. Let's keep all these. If you find us in person or if you'd like to more information, you can email us and we will tell you to buzz off. <laughs> yeah, we might tell them a little bit. We might give them a, a hint of what right. it could be. So. So, yeah, we made it over to Kent's place and then we headed to what was the place that we ate at the first night? It was, do you remember, Michael? I don't. I don't remember what the name was because we just followed wherever Kent was. We followed him. Yeah, it, it was it, some pizza place that it was like a pizza. It was more of a pub than probably yeah. anything. But they had a pizza pub type place. They had a strange pizza. That had, it was like a potato pizza. Yeah, and we got a half a potato pizza, and I think y'all just got pepperoni, right? I had something which decided to destroy my insides. <laughs> it, it was a colon ripper. I, he, 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 we're not getting into that, but it, oh. it's very unfortunate when you have to hear, come on, people are waiting. <laughs> you know, yeah, doing the best oh. I can, obviously. I don't, did anybody? I think all of us had a little something in our stomach the next morning. <laughs> it was either the pizza or the muya, maybe, or maybe a combination of the two. But yeah, oh. we'd all got something. Oh yeah, we we. I was we, in so much pain. We all destroyed oh. Kent's bathroom. That's pretty evident. No, I, I destroyed the the restaurants. <laughs> the place, the pizza was fairly good. It was okay. It decent been, at most, but it would have been better with more toppings. Maybe. Like, we got a potato pizza that had, like, a small little slice of pizza. Yeah. I'm I'm saying it had had potential. Like, they had the right idea. It was totally a hipster place. Yeah. We went to nothing but hipster places. And kolaches. Yeah. Oh, kolaches. Oh, yeah. Michael, you're a fan of the kolaches now, aren't you? I I am a newborn fan of the kolaches. Now, anytime in Austin, I'm getting a kolache. Oh, hell yeah. (laughs) Matt, Matt better always have this at Wonko so we can go right across the street. And if I, if it's at the same place, I'm doubling up whether I eat them or not. I'm going to have kolaches for every round of that. Make it'd be a good place for him to get breakfast. 
have kolaches for the tournament. Yeah, Matt should do that for us. We'll talk to him yeah. about that on the next segment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we ate the pizza place. Um, it was what it was. We, yeah. uh, we came back and of course we just didn't go right to bed. We had to step and just talk and jabber and everything mm-hmm. else. And, um, of course at the pizza place, we hung out with Matt and Pat, Pat and, um, Mike, Mike, the guy from Scotland, England, and Spike. um, who I else was there? There was a couple other people there. Kent and Melissa were there. Oh, so Nathan. There. Nathan was yeah, there. Everybody. Tim Hart was leaving when we got there, right? Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. He he got a he got a booty call, I think. Mm-hmm. What happened? He had to run for the Tang. Tang Street called. So Tang 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 went the trolley. <laughs> Maybe. Um so then the, we all went to bed. We got up really early, all took our Shifts in the shower. Mm-hmm. Some people showered together, maybe Steve and Michael. But I we'll didn't just mind the that. night before <laughs> with Michael. No, <laughs> um, with the cats. Yes, he was very considerate to do it the night before. Thus, we could spend you know the extra ten minutes sleeping. <laughs> that was helpful, though. It is. <laughs> Nobody wanted to get up that next morning. No, <laughs> it was a long trip, but it was fun. But um, we got up the next day. We go over to, I wanted to go to the Kalachi factory. And Kent kept saying, like, I think there's one over there by the store or something like that. Mm-hmm. It was a Lone Star Kalachi place, which was amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Even better than the Kalachi factory, at least from what I remember. Yeah. So I ended up getting, like, at least $10 worth of Kalachis. And Michael, you got a few of those, too, didn't you? I did. Yeah, they were all gone by the time I got there. That was good. Oh, they were so good. Did you get actually kolaches with the food and stuff? I mean, yeah. did you just get the fruit kind? Yeah, of? I got both. Oh. Yeah, they were good. The fruit ones were probably the best because they were the cheapest and, you know. They... Oh, I don't know, man. Those those ones I had with, like, the egg and all the combinations of meat yeah. in them were really amazing. Good stuff. I had one with sausage, but it was like a little wiener sausage. It, wasn't that, it was just okay. You're not into little wieners? The one I got the next day... That was more of a patty sausage. It was much better. Gotcha. It was good stuff. Um, so then we got to the tournament. Um, should we just go round by round? Sure. There was sure. Uh, 22 people there. So yep. that was good for Rock Cup. And um, I took well, I took Slon my first time. And I made a horrible build. And I think, when because we were talking on the way down, like, what did you take? I'm like... I'm not really sure, but I think it's this. And then I got there, and Matt had printed off the rosters for everybody. And I look at my roster, and I'm like, "That that's my team? Huh. So I think I sent him the wrong one. Because <laughs> I have three blitzers with sure hands, two catchers with block and dodge. And I took Roddy Startooth, um, filled out the rest with the line frogs and had two re-rolls that's a shitty build i mean yeah I'm not gonna I, disagree. I, yeah i think i agree yeah. yeah but i did tie dean the first round well dean and his undead nice he's a good player very good and i was very happy with it michael what was your roster and who did you play the first round i uh i brought undead uh to this one cheese I'm, I'm Scott. I'm so glad that you had said at one point we were talking about rosters, and you mentioned like, "Well, how come Roddy's not on your list?" And then that got me thinking, and I started. I'm like, "Why would you not take him? Why would you not?" Yeah, He's I'm just a couple, too good. A couple guys didn't take him. I, I, but about half the field didn't, from what I could see. All I know is if you can't fit Roddy on your team, then you need to play a different race for Rock Cup. That's how I yeah. feel. But go ahead. He is. He is. Yeah, he's pretty good. Um, yeah, couple mummies, couple whites. I, I did take the four ghoul option. Okay. So that, um, I don't know. Kind of the fast undead. I haven't played undead before. I played some necro at uh, Nuffaween. Did you go with skeletons or zombies or a mix? Zombies. Zombies. Yeah. I. All, all, my guys are all the reapers bones, and they mm-hmm. don't make a really good skeleton looking blood bowl guy so but all, all the other models you know they 
So if the model was available, do you think you would have took a skeleton? No, I... Are you... Some people are, like, pro-zombies, some are pro-skeletons, and I'm a little bit of both, so... I like the having five the movement movie. does come in handy. Like, that four just... I just wish I had one more, but... I like the option of the skeletons better, but I've never actually played with either, so couldn't tell you. Yeah, I like having a mix of both. The one time I played them at a tournament, so uh, skills, real quick, Michael. Um, I gave two of the ghouls block, and uh, two of the ghouls sure hands. So I've got. Uh, I always like giving them two. That way, when they pound one down and knock him out, I still got another guy ball carrier. Sure. And then um, for my last skill. Um, I gave a mummy leader. Nice. So how many rerolls do you have before the leader? Uh, two. Two. Okay. That's pretty good. So that gets me three rerolls, <laughs> which I think I use most of them every game except for that last one. So. All right. So who'd you play first round, and what was the result? I got uh, I got Mac, Matt McDonough, and the Despicable Minions, his goblin team. Okay. And um, so, did you win? Uh, it ended up one nothing. Yeah. Oh, only yeah. one nothing? Lots of tons of KOs, you know, uh, me against him. But um, I, I, my guy couldn't pick up the ball like the last second half. All of a sudden, my ghouls with sure hands decided to just go, oh, ball? What's that? Oh, I don't <laughs> know. Let's look at this thing here. Rolling lots of ones and twos. But I could have made it two nothing. But uh, he had a couple bribes to keep a lot of his weapons on the field. And uh, they were they were doing a number on me, knocking my guys down the key key areas. His bombardier was doing okay, you know, knocking down. Oh, let me throw it at the ball carrier. Oh, knocked him down. Oh. So, so you kind of slowing me down a lot. I tried to, I wanted to score a little more, but no, couldn't do it. Stop me. Missed huh. out on bonus points. Could come back and haunt you. Yeah, it could have. Yeah, I got only got four that game, but yeah, right. but still one one nothing. So uh, I, my team was the New Ketza Saints, which is a team, a, a lizard man team that uh, I played in our, in our, in our league. <clears throat> and uh, I took six sources, uh, five skinks, and Roddy Starhoof as well. Uh, I used a build that was recommended by uh, uh, Tom Rummery. I asked him for some advice, and he's like, you know, you have to take Roddy, number one. <laughs> and then he was like, you know, and then he went, he said three blocks, um, two guard on the Sauruses, and then one sure hands on the Skink. And I said, well, he's pretty good with him, so I'll, I'll try his roster. And uh, it worked fairly well. <clears throat> First game, I played a dwarf team, uh, Allie's Angels, uh, coached by David Persinger. Um, it was a dwarf team that had um, three rerolls, a uh, lot of guard. Uh, some a block dodge runner and then some stand firm on it. Um, he he had exactly eleven dudes, and right from the beginning, uh, I, I believe I I believe I kicked off to him, and you know he had his turn, and then the next turn I think I injured one of his guys for a casualty, and I think maybe I knocked out another guy. All I know is, long story short, I won two nothing and I just had numbers on them for the yeah. rest of the game. So this was in my favor and I was very happy to beat a dwarf team with all that guard and stuff like that. Um, I think this is David's third tournament. I think his first time to play in a tournament was up at Oklahoma Bowl weekend. He won, yeah. he won the orc team, the female orc team yeah. and stuff. Oh, and, uh, nice. I think he still gets a little frustrated with the, you know how the dice can uh, <laughs> blow your master plan to smithereens by just rolling a, a one. And All I need is point. a one. There's no way I will get. Oh god, dang it! I'll just re-roll it, and, get, and I think he's getting a little fr- got a little frustrated with that. But I hope he hangs in there. He's a really nice guy and stuff like that. Because it takes a blood bowl takes a while, right? So just uh, try to learn from everything you see. Which sometimes all all I see is red when I get uh, angry. <laughs> That'll happen. So uh, round two, Steve. My round two, I played Bradwell's um, Two Stone Toilers Chaos Dwarves. So again, not Brad, a... Brad had Bradwell's. Bradwell's, yeah. Brad had orcs. I thought you're right. He did have orcs. That's my bad. I um, don't even know why. But um, especially since you have a roster in front of you, I wasn't looking at it at the time. <laughs> I was just thinking of his old team. My bad. 
Yeah, so orcs versus my slon. And that's not so good. He had two guards, two blocks, a tackle. Well, a block on his troll, too, so I lost. And smear you? It wasn't too close, I don't think. Well, I think I kept it decently close for what it is. Again, I've only played, what, a, two games with Slon before this? Sure. So, I was just getting used to understanding how to use them. And I was jumping in and being annoying a lot. And I do love those blitzers. Just leap in to a cage. Even if you fall down, you're a threat. As long as you don't get your armor broke. Right. Because you can just jump up and, eh, two dice. Your choice is still a decent chance. <coughs> and that could be a block, not a blitz. So then if, yeah. you, if you can roll that block and do, you know, you don't do anything, but you're still up. Yeah. you can get a blitz in there, too. Exactly. If I can just yeah. push him outside of the cage. It came in handy a lot. And I happened to get my foul appearance on uh, one of my uh, blitzers. So, by the end of the day, all three of my blitzers had foul appearance. It's nice. pretty awesome. So, yeah. Michael, your second round? Yeah, in this tournament, every uh, you started the, the day with one of your players getting foul appearance um, randomly. Right, and then if you won a game, you, you get a randomly have a guy with fall appearance, and then if you lost the game, you get to pick the guy. Right, and so it started as, after the first game, I think. Yeah. So as you as the games progress, more and more people have fall appearance. Mm-hmm. Um, my second game was against another undead team, uh, Pat Wynn, uh, who flew in from Florida, actually. Yeah, Pat's a great guy. Yeah, yeah. I played him fourth round. He. Uh, and speaking of foul appearance, um, let's see. My Roddy Starhoof um, halfway had four blocks, and the first four blocks, I rolled foul appearance three times Jeez. against against somebody, so he couldn't block. And um, I think we had we were. I started actually keeping a little tally sheet because I like to take notes, and I started taking a tally sheet. I'm like, this is the tenth time I've I've rolled foul appearance. I'm like, this is the first half. I, I, I don't roll that many block dice. <laughs> and then and then the second half got Pat, where he even had a foul appearance, re-roll foul appearance to hit my ball carrier. And he <laughs> was blitzing with Roddy. So it just, it was one of those games, like, it was completely fun. I won one nothing at the end. Uh, he had a, you know, Hail Mary chance at the end to do it. But... With so many ones being rolled, it just evident, evidently, inevitably, a one would show up, and by then we didn't have any rerolls, so it's over. But it was very fun. A good, I had a great time playing Pat. I think we laughed about. Well, once we kind of, I think, drowned our sorrows by the first quarter, end of the first <laughs> quarter, we just kind of went, "Well, we can only laugh, right?" And he would do all this. Well, I just got to do this blitz. That's it. Let's go. <laughs> And he went. <laughs> um, let's see. Round two, I played um, <coughs> James Lowe. Um, he's, I don't know what, I think he's from one of the Austin leagues, from what I was told, or he's getting back into it or something like that. Um, anyways, he's a former player or something like that. Anyways, James Lowe, he had a Chaos Dwarf team, uh, the Sons of Hashet, And um, he had one Bull Centaur Five hobgoblins, uh, six chaos dwarfs, and uh, you know he had guard on three of them, some sure hand, strip ball, dirty player, and then block on the bull centaur. Um, right off the bat, this guy just starts murdering me, and murdering me, <clears throat> and then murdering me. At one point, it's seven on eleven, about halfway through the first half, and I'm just getting drilled. And yet, somehow I'm hanging in there. <laughs> and at one point, I guess I I had a good turn or a couple of good turns where you know some bad luck happened on his end, but where I had some good placements because he was like, "Man, I wish I had more players." And I was thinking, "So do I. I only have seven, <laughs> you know." But um, anyways, long story short, he scored first half. I I about 
tilted the table. Like I was getting really mad at myself and just mad at the game itself. Like here we go again. And then I finally was just like at halftime, I don't know, maybe I walked off or something to go to the bathroom. I was just like, calm down. Well, you were listening to music between rounds. Mm -hmm. I was, I took my, um, my daughter's uh, iPod and believe it or not, we have some tunes in there that I really like. Taylor Swift. No, it was, it's a, you're going to laugh at me or give me a hard time. It's some Christian music and stuff like that, but it's some music that I listen to to calm down or whatever, mm-hmm. just to re- kind of relax. And I thought, I'm going to try to play this before and, you know, not during the games or nothing. So I, I kind of popped that in, went, went to the bathroom, and, yeah, I kind of calmed down. And I was. I was listening to it between rounds, and I don't know. Maybe it helped. I listened to it before we even started the tournament, too. So regardless, um, I calmed down, came back for the second half. And um, I knew I had to probably be semi-aggressive on him, even though I had less players, just to kind of push it, you know, to, to score. To push it real good. And then maybe even get a chance to score the second half. Yeah. And then I had some dice go my way, and, of course, he had some bad luck. And um, anyways, long story short, I scored in the second half. We did not finish our game. I think we were like one turn away from both of us finishing the game. But uh, I tied that game one-to-one, which – in some ways felt like a victory to me since I was getting crushed so bad at, at right. one point. But so it was one to one. Good. <clears throat> so then was, I, that's when we had lunch, right? Yeah. We had lunch from, um, our, your buddy, Robert, our Robert friend. went to a place called salt lick, right? Not salt. So. Lick. Yep. Yeah. Salt lick barbecue that he loves. And he's like, that's why he likes to go down to Austin to eat barbecue and go to half price books. Mm-hmm. And so we so he brought us back some barbecue, yeah, well, and it was awesome. It was really good. Yes, it was. So it's very happy with it, Michael. It's fantastic barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah. they had sweet potato fries, which I really liked. Most of the time, I'm so so on sweet potato fries. Same here. Those were really really good sweet potato. Yeah, fries. I don't know what they did to them different, but they were good. Oh, and the sauce was good. It was like a. I don't know, sweet barbecue sauce or more of a. It was a sweet, um, like like almost honey, honey mustard ish. Yeah, I don't know, but it was it was amazing. Good stuff. It had a little bit of heat in it too, didn't it? Yeah, a little bit. A little, yeah. It was like a, like Scott said, probably a honey mustard, vinegar, and some red pepper or something. But anyways, good good food, real good. Worked out perfect. His timing and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, at that time, I don't know if I even said it to any of y'all, but I was like thinking about the matchups, and I'm like, I'm gonna play Dean. I'm mm-hmm. gonna play Dean. I'm gonna play Dean. I just know I'm gonna play Dean. And sure enough, he called the matches out, and I had to play Dean. <laughs> Which I say that because Dean's a good player. <laughs> I had to hide him. Can't be that good. <laughs> no, no, he, he is. He, he's a good player. Yeah, he's good. So, um, and since I've already started talking about this, I'll just go ahead and do my matchup. So I, I, face, I face off against Dean. Uh, he has his, uh, ESND team. Um, uh, it's all the, it's his undead team. Uh, exactly 11 players. Uh, he had three re-rolls and he had a leader on one of his mummies, which both had guard and he had a lot of guard and some sure hands and block on one of his ghouls. And they even had some frenzy. Um, very good team. Uh, before I ever get to move one player, it's 11 for Dean versus nine for me. <laughs> First hit, casualty. Second hit, knockout. And I'm going, here we go again. Scott has bad luck at tournaments where, for some reason, his armor just decides not to show up. And it wasn't on skinks. It was on sources, right. both of them. So, I was seriously, I was like, here we go again. And then I immediately thought, calm down. You managed to tie. Just play each turn. Mm-hmm. Play each turn and see what happens. Um, Dean scores in the first half. After I kind of clogged him up for a little while, you know, it was a it was a battle. I got a few hits on the ball carrier and this and that. So he scores. It's a uh, I think I injure one of his guys, and he might have knocked out one of my guys again or something. Anyways, I was still down men. Second half. Um, Here we go again. I'm down a a few men. Uh, About turn five, I think it was. This this is incredible, and I don't mean this to rub it in anybody's face or anything. But turn five, Dean was in control and winning that game one nothing. Yeah. Second half, 
I do some crazy crap, and I was like, well, I got to score now. I was about to stall on the line instead of going for it. And I thought, well, he can get to me. I guess it's better to, in the past, I would have tried to stall. Yeah. This time I was like, no, rely on your defense. And the worst can, the worst thing can happen is you get beat two to one, and you're already getting beat one to nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, So at least score, and maybe you, you can tie the game. Go for the win, not the tie. Right. So yeah. I went ahead and tied the game. And um, so it was one, still had plenty of time. Uh, I kick off to Dean, and uh, the ball scatters pretty far over, and I just go, man, it sure be nice if it started, the weather changed. Boom, rolled the weather change. Started raining. <laughs> Dean um, Dean does something. Oh, he blitzes one of my skinks to get some guys out in the field so he can throw a pass. Because we're running out of time here. Two plays left. Um, he has to go for it. He rolls a one, re-rolls one. So I get a break. Shoot the skink down the sideline to uh, go pick up the ball. Pick up the ball in the rain. Go for it twice, pick up the ball in the rain. <laughs> Dean's like, dang it. So then he moves over a zombie, and then he moves over his um, his guy with sure hands, pops me, knocks the ball out of my hand. Uh, armor does not – it's fine. But uh, Dean – the ball goes um, just to the left of Dean or whatever. So he, he goes to pick up the ball, which I would have done too, even at the rain with sure hands. Right. Why not? Yeah, of course. Yeah. If – you know, and then at least I can I don't have a chance, and – you know, you'd have to blitz with him having the dice advantage right. to even get the ball. Everything. And, yeah. So he he rolls like a two, and then he you know sure hands re rolls it. I think he rolls a two again or something like that. The ball goes out of bounds. It gets thrown up next to his mummy, but then it bounces away from his mummy, which allows me because the other turn I moved a skink down the other sideline just in case I had a chance to throw the ball. Sure. Uh, I popped my guy up, dodged away. Picked up the ball in the rain. I called pass, which I probably should have said handoff because I would have been just like one go for it instead. Of, mm-hmm. uh, threw the ball in the rain, rolled like a six, then rolled a four to catch it, and then I ran into the end zone. Jeez. It's wow. the greatest comeback I've ever had in any Blood Bowl game yeah. ever. And to, to do that against a guy who's ranked really high with a team and – you guys know Dean. You, everybody yeah. here has oh, yeah. played him. He's super calculating. He knows yep. the numbers. Dean's he, the guy who made he's the a great player. interception app, right? Yep. Yeah, he's made the interception app. Yeah, he's um, very much a – he's an engineer by trade. He's an engineer in practice. Sure. He is and, and really, calculated, yeah. He did everything right. Yeah. It's just the dice didn't happen. You know, so <laughs> That's Blood Bowl. But it was still – it was the great – I mean, I was like – I couldn't control my – excitement i was like i, I clapped know. my hands i was like woo, and all this stuff and i didn't really mean that about sportsmanship and i want to go on record as saying because i know some of the texas guys remember my rant about the roller girls <laughs> from rock <laughs> cup one mm-hmm. and everybody likes to bring up like hey dean's this and you know you and dean gonna get along me and dean got along great in yeah. that game before and after, and all the times in between, even when I was two guys down, me and Dean had no problem. Yeah. I, I set up the dice tower, and I was like, I'd like to use the dice tower, and if my dice, if I roll them by excitement somewhere else, they need to go through the dice tower. And Dean's like, I'll play the same way. Yeah. And we shared dice. We had no problems. So, see, no problems. Just fluff problems from the past. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't have any problems. No, Dean's, so, Dean's a nice guy. It's just, like I said, yeah. engineer mentality. Yeah. My brother so, and my sister-in-law are both engineers. I've dealt with that for a long time. I know, but <laughs> some some of those guys still want to kind of give me a hard time and go like, "Well, Dean, bring his roller girls," and yeah. it's like, "I don't have a problem with Dean. Stop it. <laughs> I don't have a problem." So, anyways, that was round. <laughs> that was my round three. Hey, Michael, and yours. So, so does that put you at two wins and a draw? Then, yes, sir, it does. Yeah. Um, I played uh, Tim Walker from Dallas and his orc Texas tooth smashes. Um, uh, he got me three guys in the first half. So when we started the second half, I was down three guys, Jeez. but I was able to get one of my ghouls out there fast enough to, uh, where he couldn't catch me. And I was able to go one up, one up at halftime. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, I'm leading, uh, kick off to him. High kick. He puts his pass, uh, you know, under the ball. I think he misses it or something, but he picks it up later. In the middle, I'm able to knock one of his guys out, and I put Roddy six squares away from his guy. And I'm like, all right, I'm coming at you. Because if I can get two up quick, 
He's not fast enough. I can I can win this game. I'm like, all right, all right. Get Roddy in there. Get another guy in there. And I'm kind of doing my elf. Just I'm throwing it at you defense. But I forget that elves are fast and can recover. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, he decides he's on his right sideline, two squares away, and he decides to launch a long pass to a blitzer cross field where I have like a zombie. And he makes it. And down the field he goes. I'm like, ah, crap. Well, eventually I was able to get a guy back there, even though he's kind of caged up, and I was able to push, knock him over, and get the ball out of bounds. And I've got some ghouls in like in the middle of the field, and the ball bounces out of the bounds, 11 squares. I'm like, yes! And it goes back kind of towards my end zone. He's got nobody over there. I've got a ghoul with sure hands. I'm like, all right, I got this. Goes out of bounds. I'm like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> It comes right back the exact same direction, exactly the number of (laughs) squares to be right up against the sidelines where all all of his guys are, right where it went out. (laughs) His fans are like, no, we like the ball there. I'm like, did you just drop the ball or something right there? What? Yeah. So he was able to pick it up, um, start moving down, kind of cage up a little bit while with only a couple guys. And then I had, I think I had a chance. So, this is the what would you do moment. I had a ghoul with block and, uh, block and dodge, and I had Roddy. Both of them are being marked. So both of them would have to dodge out and then hit the ball carrier two dice uphill. If Roddy does it, gets a push, he's got to do a go for it to get him again. Now I think about it, but the go for it would push him out of bounds. So who would you who would who would be the who would you do, the ghoul or Roddy? Do you have the re-roll left? No, no re-rolls. And Roddy would be one dice? Uh, Roddy would be two. They both are two die uphill. Uh, then I would do it with the ghoul. I would probably do Roddy. if uh, Because you said if you get two hits and the second hit would take him out of bounds, right? Correct. Yeah, I would have frenzied him out. I'd have to go for it. And this is the ball but, carrier, right? And this is the ball carrier who's two squares from my end zone. Yeah, I would I would use Roddy just for uh, the second hit. Yeah, if there was no re, I I I'll the, change my mind. The I, dodge I, I is go, nice, but I would go with Roddy. Yeah, I just put all my eggs in the one basket and go to your tournament, buddy. Do it. Yeah, I uh, I I picked the ghoul because I was like, well, I was trying to do the math in my head, which yeah. one had the better, the lowest chance of failing. That definitely which I does. think is the ghoul. Yeah, but yeah, I should have hit Roddy. I I ended up pushing him. I didn't fall down, um, and I was able to dodge Roddy out and get him close, but he just pushed me out and mm. went in for the draw. Yeah, and that, like I said, that's the only reason I do Roddy is just that second hit and try to get him out of bounds. But, you know, it happens. Yep. Steve, your round two, three? My round three was against Mike Carpenter, who also had orcs, and the worst luck of anyone I've ever seen. I uh, this this round I could have decided to dodge through twenty five tackle zones in a row and go for it ten times where they each add up to you know, add one to the die like that one card does. I would have made all of them, no doubt. I made every leap, I made every dodge, I made every pickup roll, I think I passed and made it, no problem. It was like my team was just on fire and could do no wrong. And, of course, I beat him. So, I got my win, but it didn't really feel like anything I was doing. It just felt like Nuffle said, screw you, dude. You're not doing anything. <laughs> Sometimes Nuffle does that. Which I think we'll probably hear from Matt. I don't think Mike had, Mike had a good day. He, we had fun, but he was definitely of the opinion of, man, I don't know why I play this game sometimes. <laughs> I think we all have those days. Yeah, it was a very bad day for him. But it was a great game for me. So, I... And I grew, just grew to love foul appearance, because Roddy was just holding up one of his black orcs for like five turns in a row, just try to hit foul appearance, try to hit foul appearance, try to hit foul appearance, and a couple of my blitzers he tried to hit foul appearance. I mean, he was failing everything. So that leads us to round four. Um, so- I guess I'm completely out of contention, so I will go first. Were you one win in 
One win, one time. loss, and one tie. Yeah. And there Michael... were six guys with two wins and a draw going in this last round. Nobody was winless. Right. Right. Uh, was, uh, that's what I was going to say. I ended up, I, was winless, just to set up the tables, I was on table one against yep. Tim Har. Yeah. Which Tim's a really good player. Um, table two was Tim Walker and Brad Wells. Yep. And then table three was Michael, you and Nathan, right? And Nathan, yep. Yeah, so, but Steve, we'll let you go first. And then we'll hey. I played Pat, so I played against Undead again. So I, I got to play two Undead and two Orc teams. Yay. Um, it was a good game. We had a lot of fun. As you said, Pat's a great coach. Just a lot of fun to hang out with, but wasn't in the cards. I kept it tight. That's my main thing from this whole thing. I don't know how to play Slon well, but I learned. And I had a horrible build. My skills did not come into play hardly at all. Catchers kind of, but I'm, I'm really wanting to play them again. But I, I kept everything close. Had one win, tie against a good player. So I'm not going to complain too much. Michael? I, I played Nathan and his Wood Elves, the Bow Breakers, and um, I, uh, it, it was led to the time when the uh when i well actually he knocked himself out to clear the pitch so that was kind of amazing that helps i, I beat him three nothing i think at the end of the first half he had like four guys left it just god it was it was crazy were you just destroying him or was he having bad luck dodging or it, just it was everything? it was a little bit of both um he had a, and after a bit, he would have like awesome luck, but he would only have like two guys. So I'd be, <laughs> well, I'll just put three guys around and blitz you and get a three die block, knock the ball out. Okay. Um, his, I knocked the war dancer out really quick. And the other one got four blitzes of which they were always two die uphill and he'd always get a skull. Jeez. So he'd get knocked down. I couldn't knock him out. And then finally I just went over there and went, well, there's five guys around foul. <laughs> right <laughs> out. So I got eight casualties, two by fouls, God. and um, I, I cleared the pitch. But he actually cleared the pitch for me because he was blocking one of my guys, and we got both down. So he, <laughs> I knocked him out. <laughs> ah, both he, down. The number one Blood Bowl podcast for all your pitch-clearing fantasies. <laughs> I, I don't think that's – I've never heard of that. I've always heard people, you know, pow and knock guys out. But, so you, uh, you maxed out on bonus points this round, right? 71 – uh, that was 11 bonus points maxed out. Yeah. So did, how, how well did you feel going into without knowing my result? Um, I, well, I mean, Matt was telling me you need to get all your points to be in contention. And that's all I knew. Okay. Yeah. But you so, also I mean, knew I the just... records of everybody and you knew yeah. if you won and the other two tied or, you know, you could easily be first, or if somebody won and had a lot of bonus points, you could be second or third or fourth. Who knows? I, f- I was figuring maybe the top three tables. You know, if if you win, you're probably going to be one of the top three anyways. Right. Yeah. Just the way it was. So I was like, I got something. I'm happy. Logic, yeah. All right. So I, I played Tim Har, and uh, I don't know if I've ever seen Tim play anything but Chaos Dwarves, so... I had to play two Chaos Dwarf teams, a Dwarf team, and an Undead team. And mm-hmm. uh, some... Um, a lot of tough teams. And a lot of good coaches. And yeah. So, like, I was... Number one, I was happy to just to be at the top table. Just because of my comeback win, and I won two games and everything else. So, so, anyways, here we go. We're going against Tim. So, the first game, I had luck by injuring some guys early and taking numbers. And the next two games, I had to fight off the injury bug. Well, this game went back just like game four. I started, or game one, I'm sorry. Game one and four were pretty much exactly the same in a lot of aspects, except um, I I was beating up a Chaos Dwarf team. Mm -hmm. So I start getting some injuries and knocking dudes out and casual team people. And if you guys know Tim, he's not used to that. He's more used to like, oh my God. Causing the casualties. He he, he pitch cleared Brian too. Yeah, at at Spikey. Yeah. And um, yeah, so he. Two was playing Nurgle. Tim so. Tim beats up people. Yeah. Um, 
I've never heard of Tim not beating up people. Right. Let's put it that way. Because that's what I was worried about, too, going and into it. that's his thing, yeah. I was like, well, win or lose or tie, he's going to beat me up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's like, but um, I beat him up pretty good. Um, went up one nothing. I made a what I think is a major mistake, um, even though I had numbers on him, and it gave him a chance to – Take a chance and dodge away and scramble up the field and he he scored it was one to one yeah and then um, I put in the final drive to get in there and waste some clock and to score on him and so I ended up winning the game two two to one did you uh, finish on time uh, we we yes okay we, we did finish on time it came down to like the last turn though or whatever yeah so um, he tried I, I made another mistake too by doing a block and a just a block that didn't matter. But by doing so, I pushed him forward, which gave him a chance to, to go for it twice and get a, get a blitz. And, um, anyways, long story short, I won and he shook my hand. He's like, great game. And it was, we had a really good game. Um, so I won at top table and I thought, surely I got first or second, (laughs) but you knew Michael cleared the pitch. I did know. And Brad, I honestly, him. um, I was giving Matt a hard time about like, you know, I come in at first top table and win, but <laughs> you know, honestly, I, most tournaments, I don't look at bonus points. I right. mean, if they're there, that's fine. But you, first thing you want to do is win yeah, or try not to get beat. This is and one of the few if times I, like for this many players, this caliber of player that bonus points really mattered at the top. Right, and I had yeah. two games. Uh, me and Dean's game, even though I ran into the 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 game, mm-hmm. uh, Matt called it before we had to do one more kickoff. So I had two games where we did not finish, so I did not get those bonus points. Right, so that's one point each. I one think. point each. But um, anyways, at this point, I thought I, thought I got first or second. Yeah. I really did. And I knew Brad won big time over on his game uh, with, with Tim. And so I was like, well, we'll just see what happens. Surely if I'm this far up on the table, I'll still get first or second. And then the awards come in, and my hops in spade foots surprise everybody and come in first. Right. No. That did not happen at all. Actually, the first no. place went to our good buddy, Michael Lewis. Yay. Yay. By three, three points. Pretty amazing. Right. You had That's 27, right? I had 227, yep. Okay, and then so you had two twenty seven. Second place went to Brad Wells with two twenty four. Yeah. And then I had two twenty three. So by not finishing my games, and I'm a proponent for bonus points for finishing right. games. Yeah. Um Yeah, I lost out. So I wonder uh, if Brad turned his roster in on time. He did not. I didn't think he, he did, would. He, he did has not problem turn his that. roster in on time. That's ten points, isn't it? That's one point. Oh. Oh, never mind. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, you had 12 bonus points. Brad had 14, and I had 16. Not including the one. We also, me and you got an extra one for handing our list in on time. Ah, uh, well, that's where I look, you know. Yeah. It is what, that, okay, that explains where I got the extra bonus point thing. Because I was trying to figure out stuff at the time, like, I think because I, I figured oh, yeah, out, I remember you saying that too. I I thought I lost by two points yeah. during the day, and then so that that explains what they yeah. I was just point. looking at the rules again. I remember that that was there. So, anyways, um, it was still a good day. I was, I'll go I'll go three wins and a tie anytime, and just let fate decide I where I love go. Love that, yeah. So, I did want to win first because sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sour because I I I feel like I played. Two good games against two really good coaches, but you got to play who you got to play. Mm-hmm. And I blame Nathan for KOing himself. To <laughs> <laughs> no, congratulations, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Now we did take both, uh, you know, first and third. That's right. We did take out of Texas, so we brought it back to Oklahoma. It's very true. That's right. I got my my new lead trophy up in the trophy case, and I'm very proud of it. I got second when I went, so I did better than you did. You did. So we've gotten first, second, and third out of the three of us. And best defense. I got best defense last year. Oh, good. So yeah, I didn't get oh, jacked nice. this year. So, anyways, yeah, we had a we had a good time. Yeah. Um, that night we went to 
Where did we go? What was that place called? That was a hipster place. Too. That was a very hipster place. Was Hudson. it like Delta Cafe or something? No, it was oh, Hudson or something, here. wasn't it? it was, we have a Delta Cafe around here, I think. Yeah, it's. It, but it was kind of like a It was cafe something, something. something cafe. Yeah. And yeah. I had, for the yeah. first time, I had those. What were those little things that was on my eggs Benedict? That I said, take, capers? Oh, capers. Okay. I thought were little fish. fish. Yeah. Was it Capers? I don't know what it was. I don't know. Anyways, we had some weird food at this place. Service was so-so. Service was not good. Food was decent at best. And what was it, 1 a.m. when we got there? It was 1 a.m. Yeah. The day went a little long, but it was still fun. Yeah, the tournament lasted until a little bit over 10. Well, it's an issue that will be addressed. But um, I will say this, Yeah. and I feel like... Um, I'm probably a jerk for saying it, but uh, I and I know some people left the tournament a little bit early. Yeah, to you know whether they there had were, there family. were two people who had really bad headaches. So right. some had bad headaches, and I, and I don't walk in your shoes, and I don't mm. know your family life, or if you had to rush home to family, which does come before Blood Bowl. I agree, but uh, I don't know. I there was some people not there at the very end. Yeah, and to me, part of going to a tournament is. Good or bad or ugly, you sit there and you clap for the other guys who yeah. get little yeah. trophies and stuff. And I'm sure those guys all meant to be there too, but maybe it was just circumstantial. Things happen. It's yeah. not a big deal. So, anyways, but um, a lot of fun that night. Mm-hmm. Um, then we got up early the next morning and we were all ready just to come home. We hit the Kalachi place. You were pretty much ready to get Kalachis. Uh, I was ready to get Kalachis too. I got kolaches and then I bought a big old bag of kolaches. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. And you busted into those bag of kolaches on the way home. I did. (laughs) I should have got a big bag of kolaches, too. (laughs) Dude, they were like four bucks because they were day-olds. They were amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's right. And they were day-old, so they were cheap. Yeah, I was like, how much are these? She was like, four dollars? I was like, sold. What did we do for lunch on the way back? Anything? Um... No, we, just I don't, we didn't stop for lunch. No, we, just we drove just through. Really dri- driving through. We were all just kind of on a mission. I had to yeah. get my, t- my kids. We got gas and yeah, we had little snacks. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, we just drove on through, and then we were gonna go maybe eat sushi or Mexican food up here. But once we got home, it was just kind of like yeah, and yeah. Michael's like yeah, I want to get back to my house. So yeah, <laughs> but well, we took time. a little break for like forty five minutes, which I kind of needed a break anyway. Yeah. Then, of course. Yep, I better get back. Yeah, well, we had that energy so, going. So, but a good time. Place, the place was Kirby Lane. Kirby That's Lane. That's right, Kirby. Okay, Kirby Lane Cafe or mm-hmm. just Kirby Lane. Kirby Lane Cafe. Kirby Lane Cafe. So, I would recommend not going there. I would try something different if I went, but it was. Yeah, Robert's Mill. It's three o'clock in the morning, and yeah, it was twenty. It was, it was twenty four seven place. Yeah, the yeah. barbecue still was the best meal we had. Barbecue and the kolaches. Yeah. Well, so. Moo Yeah was my favorite. Barbecue is really good, though. Yep. Anything else, fellas, besides us taking home the gold? And, and I guess us three are going to go up to three dot brawl, right? Mm-hmm. Just yep. a couple of weeks. You're still in, Michael, as long as your plane lands, right? As long as my plane lands, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> so let's hope for good weather next Friday. That's for sure. Uh, next Friday. Jeez. Jeez, is it that soon? Yeah. Does everybody know what they're taking? I think so. I haven't sent it in yet, though. Mm. No, you don't. I don't think you have to send it in, do you? Well, you should. Oh, well, I guess not. But because really, you're you email the store. I think when oh, I, went, I don't even went know last if I've done year, that. I was talking to them about it, and they're like, "Just show up with it. It's no big deal." Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Good. <clears throat> I'm still undecided. What am I taking? I think, oh, I'm taking Chaos Pact. No, you're taking Dwarves. No. Yeah, you're taking dwarves. Yeah, I am. I'm taking dwarves. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm either taking, taking Chaos Pack to Emerald City. Right. I'm either With taking... With three big guys? Yep. Oh, yeah. I'm either taking dwarves, Chaos Pack, or what else? I don't know which. <laughs> Take dwarves. Well, I was set on wood elves for about four months, and now I'm last... Three weeks I've been like looking at other rosters. So I, well, I have we, no idea. We should figure out what Brian 2 is taking. And then. I, I'm just going to say. 
Unless I play him the first round, I don't plan on playing him again. Let's go. Are you getting cold feet on the Wood Elves then? Um, and every tournament's different. I'm not a big fan of this tournament build. I don't like the. I don't like, it's not, you know, the tournament build is not you have 120k to spend on skills. It's you have six regular skills. Or you can take four regular skills and one double. So on and so on. Oh, yeah. It's right. a, and you it's can't a, double up unless you take the third package, right? Uh, the third package two. is two doubles and two, right. And I know it's roughly the same as saying that you have 120k. But it's just something in me that, it, I don't know. I don't know what I'm makes take. it a little bit tougher. It, it it really does. Yeah, but I'm I'm probably not going chaos pack because you need a double or something in there with the the big yeah. guys. Mm-hmm. So I, it's probably going to be wood elves or dwarves, and I just haven't decided yet. Yeah, so. I think that's why I changed because I had dwarves all set up, Emerald City themed, named after all the Wizard of Oz people, and then I was like, eh, I think. Chaos Pact would actually work with that build better. It's like, but I already have this team. Oh, I could take it to this. So, right. Uh, if I if I said had to lean, and right now I'm probably leaning towards dwarves just because I like some of the builds better for yeah. the other teams at Emerald City and Diablo. But we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. You're taking the apes, right? I'm gonna try the, the uh, apes of wrath. Yep, they're right. they're pretty crazy. Well, that's the one tournament you can go play them in. So yeah. If I have, oh god! Now I have to get an ape team and call them the Apes of Spades, <laughs> and I can just play that song the whole time I'm playing. The Apes of Spades. It's the Apes of Spades. The Apes of Spades. Is that a real song? Motorhead. No, it's Motorhead. Uh, Ace of Spades. Oh, okay. Okay. It's Motorhead, it. right? Michael doesn't know. I don't know. God. That guy travels the world. He didn't have time for Motorhead. Yeah, I got him in trouble at work today. He <laughs> sent me a name of someone. And I'm like, he's like, do you know who this is? I think you'd be really into her. Well, she seems up your your alley. I'm like, uh, is this a sort of Bailey J kind of thing? <laughs> and then I realized. me going, oh, I don't know who that is. Let me Google. Click. Oh. <laughs> She's fairly attractive, huh? I'd asked him before so for some uh, world music ideas, and that's what it was. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Well, awesome. You have anything else to say, Michael, besides uh, J. Lee Bay's really hot? Bailey J. Not Bailey J. Bailey J. Bay. Bailey J. Bailey yeah. J. Um, I was just thinking on your Apes of Spades, you could actually get an ape and then like put spades, like uh, shave their hair into little shapes of spades. Ooh. That. I was thinking about dressing up like uh, the, the Royal, Royal Flush, Flush gang. gang. There you go. Yeah. Oh, nice. Mean, all white with nice. uh, mm-hmm. spades, with spades on. on them and have the different king of spades and queen. And Too bad I don't like your name. <laughs> I know. It's, I, I don't really either, but I do. You know, <laughs> I guess. It's one of those, um, I guess I have to bow to it. <laughs> well, uh, Steve and I, we're going to be talking about slan builds because I think that's what I'm going to take to Emerald City. Okay, cool. Yeah. It sounds like a very um, much like a flying monkey, you know. I, I yeah. wouldn't I wouldn't listen to him on talking about slam bills. You can talk to Brian too when you're there too, so <laughs> but Well I, I already Blitzers. know what not to take. <laughs> right. <laughs> you run it by Steve and if he says that sounds pretty good, you change it. I'm pretty okay. sure the sure hands was supposed to go with Dude, I remember telling you like diving you know, catch. I was like, Why do you have three sure hands? And you're like, Well, I want to make sure I pick up the ball and I'm like, Okay. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> it was an anyways no big deal it was still fun well michael once again correct congratulations thank you sir thank and, you sir and since we're becoming closer and closer friends i have to give you shit by saying like even though my record was the same congratulations because <laughs> i had to give this thing to steve when, from buckman's <laughs> exactly and i don't care because i have the trophy but it is what it is right mm. And if yeah. I was in Michael's shoes, I'd be l- licking all over that trophy. <laughs> Ew. Uh, the little NAF trophy is pretty cool. Oh, the NAF trophy is awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, that'll be a good uh, I'll have one of those, yeah. score marker now. I think I'm missing like a good score marker. Yeah, I got to paint mine up from Nuffleen. It's intimidating. It's pretty cool, and that's that's why actually when I when I got in the space to have a chance to win it mm-hmm. after that game is when I really started thinking like, oh, this is 22 people here. This mm-hmm. would be a nice tournament to win, <laughs> but didn't happen. Oh well. All right, Michael. Thanks for coming on. Anytime. All right. Thanks for having me, guys. All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye. All right. Now that we've done the wrap-up, let's do the guy who did the wrapping for us, who created all this. The whitest rapper ever. (laughs) The whitest rapper ever, DJ Matt McMatt. (laughs) How's it going, Matt? It's going well, guys. Good. And his real name is Matt McDonough, just so That's... everybody around the world know who is the father of the Rock Cup. I don't even know me. why we call you Matt McMatt. I, I think I don't, that's a G-dub I, thing, right? I think so. From I think that may have been where it started. Sounds right. I don't know if it was you guys or G-dub. Or it's been said both places, we'll, I know. We'll blame G-dub. It's fine. We'll blame him for everything. <laughs> I don't think we started it. If, if we did, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> did, did it start with, with uh, when they when they were talking about who Chaz's father was? Um, Maybe so. I, I think for Rock Cup or for um, Chaos Cup last year, I think maybe that's where it maybe that's where it originated. Uh, that, yeah, but I'm not sure. So, Matt, how many people did you have this year? Uh, this year, and. You're the record keeper, but the best I could tell, we had the largest Blood Bowl tournament ever in Texas with uh, 22 players this that, year. That is pretty awesome. We had a I good was, bunch. Yeah. And that was up four from last year, from 18 to, to 22, which actually put us over the top. Uh, when I researched it, I think Bugman's Bowl 2 had 20, 20. in I, it. I believe that's correct, too. And I think whoever won that tournament is probably the best player ever. Probably the guy I've who heard came rumors in second was the best player <laughs> since he had vampires. Uh, and he had squiggies. <laughs> and the same exact record as the guy who won first place. I beat a dwarf team with Amazon. Okay, I tied a dwarf team with Amazon. <laughs> that alone should give me a record. Regardless. Yes, you you set a record. Um, and as you stated, this is your third year running Rock Cup? Yeah, the first year yeah. you only had 14, if I remember correctly. So it's grown every year. It's grown every year. Um, I've got some regulars. I think when I looked this year, there was only like six or seven people that were there all three years. Yeah. Um, so I've had a pretty good mix of in and out people. There's a lot of people uh, this year I didn't recognize, including the yeah. guy from Scotland. So yeah, yeah. That there's a. Uh, I get to, Mike was. Uh, that was a really cool story. I got this weird message from guy who said. Hey, I may or may not be in Austin the weekend of Rod Cup, and I've never played in a Blood Bowl tournament before, but I play in leagues. Uh, I'd love to come to the tournament, but you know, can we work something out? Because I won't know until it's much closer if I could make it or not. So I said, "Hey, Mike, sure, no problem. You know, we'll take care of that. Let me know what you need." And he replied back a couple weeks uh, before the tournament and said, "Hey, I'm going to be there for sure. I've got my entire trip booked." But I need a place to crash for that weekend. Um, so my, my house tends to be crazy. I have uh, a first a first grader uh, daughter. My mother in law lives with me, uh, so I'm usually not the best landing spot. But uh, uh, Kent's uh, K Ref's uh, place was full for for people coming to the tournament. Uh, so I said, oh, "All right, Mike, you could you could crash at my place." So uh, you know, I've had a p- person travel from Scotland, which I think. Beats all of your tournaments for furthest travel. Yeah, so just just saying that. Yeah, pretty much. That out there. I, I believe when the ride home, Steve goes. You know, we're going to hear, hear from Matt about him bragging <laughs> about having somebody from the Europe. first international <laughs> person. Yeah, I have my international tournament. Um, hey, so you was, take the you really take it where you cool. can get it. Yeah, that's all right. So well, part of Mike's Mike's trip was literally around the world because he started in Scotland, went through Asia, came to the United States, and went back to Scotland. So he literally went around the entire globe on that business trip that uh, he ended up in Texas to, to play the tournament on. Yeah, he's a very awesome guy. Yeah, he's a really cool dude. He enjoyed his beer. So, Matt, why don't you – you have the time and the vo- – or not the time. You have this segment to 
Yeah, we're getting more rain. Yeah, that's what I thought that was. <laughs> we're in the middle of like uh, the flood. Day 38. Day 38 oh, of the flood, yeah. Um, so why don't you, uh, since we're supposed to be the fluff podcast, why don't you give some little fluff behind the rock cup? So, uh, or just, you know, generalization. And of course, that. it's rot, R-O-T, for. So uh, back yeah. in the history of Texas, uh, in between when Texas had been taken over by Mexico and before we became part of the United States, we were the Republic of Texas, R-O-T. Um, and there's a big motorcycle um, uh, thing here in town that's the Rot Rally. Um, in Austin, it, um, it's a better so rally I, than the one held at Twin Peaks in Waco. <laughs> so it's a pretty big deal. I've never gone to it myself, but it, it takes over the whole downtown area, and they have concerts everywhere and crazy bikes and stuff. Um, but uh, I kind of always like that, um, you know. And although I'm not a huge proponent of it, you know, people always, uh, you know, play up on Texas and don't mess with Texas and. Um, uh, they, you know, somewhere buried in the Texas uh, Constitution, we when we join the United States, somehow we reserve the right to secede without the same entanglements any other state would really have at the time, which I think would probably be close to impossible to pull off. But I always think it's kind of a, a neat little tidbit, and um, I just wanted to incorporate some of that Texas flavor into there. But you know, you also have the sort of the double entendre with Nurgle's rot. Uh, which has sort of become my theme as I've kind of built it up over the years, was was that Republic of Texas Nurgle's Rot uh, kind of theme to it. Uh, the first year I kept it pretty much Texas themed, and I I played around with uh, some weather, um, and then uh, and, and it had a sort of Texas themed weather in it. Um, the second year I added um, the uh, the Texas Rot which um, each round before each game, you randomly give a player, uh, either randomly or you get to assign, depending on whether you won or lost the last game, um, you get to assign a player um, a foul appearance, which I thought was sort of benign enough, but sort of still fun to give some flavor uh, to the tournament. Um, I, I added in... Uh, go ahead. I, I totally uh, agree. I think that was one of the great add-ons yeah. in that second year, following into the third, and probably for the rest of the history of this tournament. Yeah, it's, it's I like it a lot. The core. You know, and I basically say, you know, in the tournament there's, and I, I don't even remember the exact quote in my, in my, I have the fluff in the rules, um, but it basically says in the tournament, the players have started to get ill and, and uh, you know, with this thing that's being passed from player to player around thinking, you know, all these players sort of gathered in one big area to to play you know sort of like the world cup or whatever they're all you know passing it along to each other um and uh that was sort of the idea behind that but i I wanted to pick something that was kind of cool and unique and i didn't want to like add skills take away skill like skills that somebody had thought about i thought that was a little rough i I mean in in a fun tournament that's fine um i think you you guys do that in uh nuffleween where you subtract skills or something um, off of the last two we have the last two yeah. years we did the trick-or-treat thing where yeah you'd randomly lose a skill or you could pick to lose a skill mm-hmm. yeah depending kind of the same way you decide on the uh foul i appearance. think i use the same methodology mm-hmm. for um but you're adding nurgle's rod instead of taking away a skill and i um just for me personally i kind of thought well i don't want to screw with anything that people really put a lot of thought into um sure and foul appearance is really simple yeah, mm-hmm. really effective. I mean, it's the best thing ever to avoid a block. If and it's you... very chaotic because <laughs> right. it might be completely worthless or it might work 17 times in a row like it did for me. So <laughs> Yeah. Um, also, in the second year, I tried once again to tinker with weather. And people who have listened to this <laughs> show have heard me bitch endlessly about weather when I go to your guys' tournaments. Not so um, easy, is it? And, and I tried again, <laughs> and I, I tried to actually come up with some – different weather conditions and um one of them that i think you i think i had a d8 last year or like a year ago and uh basically it was plus one all armor breaks and since we start each game with the weather on table one they rolled that weather 
it like was quite to start often, yeah. two or three of the games. So everybody who was an Armor Six or Armor Seven uh, team, particularly, I think there were several like Wood Elf players, and they were just having a fit <laughs> over how they were just getting wiped off the pitch. And it it was totally dumb luck. It was it was you know the lowest percent chance of weather to get was that weather, and it just I felt terrible because I just I felt like I totally wrecked some of these players day because i had this screwy weather condition now there was a complimentary one that had the exact same amount of chance that was minus one and i don't know that we ever started a game with that weather <laughs> so they just never got the complimentary one um and then uh the last uh the the other the other two things i added in was uh kind of like a lot of other um tournaments they sort of thematically add in star players that any team can take so i basically took any star player that seems sort of nurgly, chaotic y kind of uh, players, and I made them available to all teams, which is still kind of benign. I mean, very, very few of those players are ever taken anyway, but it's more yeah. of a thematic thing. And then um, I created uh, my own star player, Roddy Starhoof, um, and I gave him a, a whole bunch of. of kind of weird skills he's basically uh a star player pestigore which there there isn't one in the game and i think i even researched it with you guys we could never find any reference to a star player pestigore no ever in the fluff so that's where uh roddy Starhoof uh sort of came up i gave him uh you a gave bunch him of skills block, that, uh, foul aren't, appearance aren't superpowers yeah it was horns block foul appearance frenzy fan, fan favorite, favorite and regen and, and regen for 120, um, he, come on. Yeah, it's 120. I mean, it's so cheap. You know what though? Before we argue about this, he is cheap. But every team, every team has the option of taking him. Oh yeah. And let me tell you something. If you don't take him to the tournament, don't play with that team. If you say I can't fit him in on this team, then don't take that team. I was yeah. shocked how many people did not take this player. I thought everybody would, and I ended up playing two or three people that didn't have him. Right, I, I played, uh, nobody I played had a Roddy Star Tooth, and I was like, okay, or Star Hoof, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, <laughs> I think it and, he's called a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the thing is, is he has loner, which means he can be a big pain in the ass, too. Mm-hmm. But he can be pretty amazing. Yes. So, But there, there's as long as he's a part of the tournament <clears throat> and he's this price, I don't see why nobody didn't take him. I mean... That's that's my point of view, <laughs> at least. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of looking back. The uh, first place team had him. Uh, you had him on your team, and let me see. I don't think Brad had him. I don't think Brad had him because he's chaos dwarves, and I don't. Right. I don't think mathematically you could actually fit him in on a chaos dwarf team. Oh, you could. You could. I mean, but you would you would give up. <laughs> A bull centaur or something. Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. Sure. You can always fit him on any any team. Yeah. So out of the top four teams, two had him and two didn't because Dean, yeah, uh, Dean, didn't Dean finished him. fourth and he didn't have him. And I don't think uh, Tim Har had him either, did no, he? No, he did not. Actually, yeah. Brad did. Brad had him? Yep. Brad. Okay. So the top, and, th- top three yeah. teams had him. So, And that was kind of a big change from – last year because not very many people took him and the people that took him didn't do real well so um i I was kind of i've been tracking it sort of see how it affects the turnout so this year if all top three teams had it you know i i may have to consider uh maybe raising the price a little um because people have caught on how to use them and i think somewhat that's happened um uh, with the the player you guys had for Oklahoma Bowl, where people figured out how to use him and what teams he fit in best with, Cromnar Dung, Krom, yeah, Cromnar Dung, and um, I I think eventually people figured out how to master playing with him. Yeah, um, and we might have to figure out a way to bring him back. <laughs> so I might have to tinker with uh, Roddy again because he was super successful, but I do have like a whole set of fluff with him where um, he only plays in Texas. Um, and he won't play anywhere else. And, you know, I had a whole, like, uh, you know, thing about him being a star player. So it was kind of – I put a lot of thought into him, and I, I sort of priced out – there was – I forget what podcast it was. Somebody had um, – I want to say it was Tom Anders interviewed about – It was Three Die Block. 
a three day block. They interviewed Tom Anders, and I think was he officially part of the the rules committee? Yeah, yeah, he's so, the Alex Star, Star Scraper. He was basically the guy who wrote everything, to my understanding. Yeah, and they talked to him a lot about because I think they were talking about the the Simeon team with the Apes of Wrath mm -hmm. um, and how he figured out how to point things out. And I tried to use some of that methodology and said, all right, if you start with um, a uh, a base uh, Pestigore and you add these skills, how much would, you know, and through a progression, you add these skills, how much would be worth? All right, now if I add Loner, that might, you know, take away one of those skills really cost-wise. Right. So I put some thought into getting it to 120, but I really wanted to keep them at a cost where – I didn't want to do all this fluff and all this work and then have nobody ever take him. Oh, yeah. I um, completely understand. And I think he's well-priced. He is cheap. But as Scott said, it's part of the fun. Well, last year when I took a necromantic team, I had to sacrifice a werewolf to get him. Mm -hmm. This year I had to sacrifice it's... the Croxagore on my Lizardman team. Yeah. And so you do have to sacrifice something. But I, I think he's available to you know to be played. I don't really know what I sacrificed. Did you have a Croxagore? No. Okay, that's what you sacrificed, probably. I don't know if I would with your yeah, I guess so. Slam team. So, I I don't know. I think he's fine. Um, if he once again, if he is under cost, everybody has that option. Still. Yeah. So it's not just like everybody could get lewd grip uh, whip arm if they really want it. So mm -hmm. you can't call somebody unfair if yeah. it's available for everybody. Yeah. So, but, so I guess leading up into uh, my my third year, I basically dropped the weather altogether because I just found that I sucked at creating a weather table that didn't piss off somebody. Yeah, um, we and, wouldn't know anything about that. In hindsight, probably rightly so. Um, <laughs> you know, they always seem like good ideas, you know, they always seem like good ideas, you know, until you play them. You know, what did, what did Mike Tyson say? The It's always a good plan until you get punched in the face the first time. Yep. Um, so I, I just, I decided, I'm like, well, you know, me personally, it always annoys me when weather some screwy weather screws up my game and my yeah. plan and what I really wanted to do in a tournament. Um, so that's me personally. And, and I think that's when, you know, if anybody's out there thinking about running a tournament or you're, you're early on or figuring out how to mix up your tournament, you definitely want to get some of your own flavor in there. And I was trying to, to do unique things. And I think with the Texas rod and Roddy star hook, and the availability of all the chaotic y, nurgly star players, I, I think that's probably enough to give the theme. And the, the weather was just over the top um, for a number of things you had to keep track of in a yeah. tournament. You really only um, want to do a couple of things, otherwise, it yeah. becomes just too cumbersome. And, and really, it, you're either all in or all out. When it, cause, you know, I listen to other tournaments, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing to do crazy things you got to keep track of in a tournament. No. Um, because there are some tournaments out there that are insanely complicated in the stuff, and they sound really fun. I'm like, I would want to go play in those, but that's the whole purpose of the tournament is to do crazy things that make, you know, kind of like Spiky Cup. Spiky I mean, Cup Spiky is Cup crazy. Is there's crazy. some that make Spiky Cup look like a normal tournament <laughs> based based on some of those crazy rules. Like I, I think what Headbangers Ball was last weekend. I, that's got some insanely crazy. Yeah, rules it does. It. Um, or the one tournament where you keep adding like 120 per round. Yeah. Oh, Underworld Cup. Yeah. Underworld yeah. Cup's another one. I mean, there's a ton of paperwork you got to keep track of around and around in those games. So and the Double Skulls guy was went to a tournament where like there's a whole new team. Yeah, just you just like the you, you brought two teams and oh oh yeah the one where they switched they switched teams. turncoat yeah. style yeah between rounds or oh. something like that so something crazy what? like that but uh, honestly I think I think uh, having Roddy Startooth and the Nurgle Life Oof. players available <laughs> and to have um, the the foul appearance, I think, is the perfect mi mix for yeah. our area because we have, let's not kid ourselves, we have a lot of people that's played for a couple of years and we have every year we have a couple of new guys and, you know, or father and son or whoever right. looking yeah. at playing. And so you don't want to comp make it too complex. Definitely not. Not right now. Or complicated yeah. right now. So, I mean, I think it's a perfect mix. I think you got the perfect formula. But, And I like crazy weather. So, uh, don't get me wrong. But taking that out, that's just one less thing you have to worry about. See, because no matter how many times you theorize playtesting and stuff, 
all it takes is one tournament and you go i didn't think of that yeah i didn't think of I that mean, i didn't think of that the, the best example was that plus one armor break and i was like i never really thought like what if i have to suffer through the first two games most of the games sat in that weather for the whole game Jeez. like i never really thought of that and that's exactly what happened and i was like man I never thought about it as a play because I, I didn't play last year. I played in the year one and year three, you know, the year the tournament we just had. Um, I never really thought about putting myself in that spot, and uh, it was it was pretty brutal to watch when I didn't have anything other to do <laughs> walk around tables and go. I can't believe this weather. This is terrible. Uh. So, yeah, that was my my. That's when I really I think during that tournament walking around those first rounds when I was like that's it I'm done with weather I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna screw with weather ever again. getting dirty looks from everybody yeah 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 I know that feeling so this year um the other thing we've kind of done with <laughs> we've never really found a true home hopefully this year we found our true home at least for uh, a while um the first year we had in a local game store called Dragon's Lair that you guys have talked about on the show before it's just gigantic uh game store here in Austin um you know it's like the mega store and has a lot of the you know the geek chic kind of stuff in the store and right. if what uh I think 12 permanent warhammer tables set up and just dozens and dozens of folding tables set up for various different games um their schedule is just so insane to actually plan a tournament with any in any length out in time um you know, they did. It, it really it was even hard that first year to get it scheduled. Right. Um, so I kind of gave up on them because I just I can't schedule out far enough for, uh, for them. Um, last year, um, uh, I tried with them. Uh, they came back on short notice and said, oh, well, you can't have it. So I had to kind of move it. Um, I was scrambling a bit. Um, I tried for some free or cheap halls um, that were available to me. I couldn't find anything. I finally found a hotel that was within my budget which was zero it was close enough to my budget uh to have it at a hotel in a kind of a medium-sized meeting room uh you guys were there or, well i guess one of you was there was. last year <laughs> you were at home crying over your busted up car and just, yeah, how messed I, up i was you up were. i was home just on drugs just having, um, a, having a blast <laughs> but i mean to spend any money at all in the hall and and not charge uh you know an exorbitant amount i'm trying to keep it like under 25 bucks 20 bucks it's kind of my target price range it's just long term i wasn't going to be able to do the kind of things i wanted to do i mean literally last year last year i had to sell a whole bunch of snacks and sodas and stuff to try to make up the money for the hall and i yeah i make a pretty good chunk and then i um i sold a bunch of the dice to mostly international guys over in europe um uh you know to help me out Mm -hmm. so i made up a lot of that money back other places but uh, that was that was I was out further than I really wanted to be financially because as tournament organizers you know it's it's a loss ga- it's a lose game I mean you will never they're not money makers right you do it because you love the you love the hobby and you love the what? game what <laughs> <laughs> Scott doesn't run the money you guys you yeah. guys make tons of money no sure I, no yeah, but that's that, that that is the, no Scott yells at me for spending all the money. <laughs> No, Steve will go, well, we have like $15 left, so I'll do this. And I'm like, it's okay if we make $15. <laughs> my, my wife asked me, she's like, do you actually have a budget or do you think? I'm like, no, I don't because I'm afraid I'd cry if I actually knew the exact numbers. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, for a tournament. <laughs> like this year, I'm trying to put the numbers together for, um, you know, the the fifth anniversary, trying to do something special. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay. Maybe we will run it at the shop instead of getting a hotel. Because <laughs> I mean, I'd like does... to do a hotel, but yeah, cost-wise, it might just be prohibitive. Because here are your choices. If you want to keep it similar to the cost you've had in the past, you're going to give up something cool that we could have at the tournament, mm-hmm. or you could pass the cost on to everybody else and hope you get a good turnout yeah. and you don't eat it. Now, next year we're going to get 50. We we're, better get 50. We're going to get 50 at ours, and then we're going to get 30 for Rock Cup. That'd be awesome. I'd That'd love cool. to have 30. And then watch scars grow and yeah. all these things. This be this be awesome. I mean, there were there were a bunch of regulars that, that for good reasons couldn't come. Um, you know, we had um, Paul couldn't come. He was running a small tournament to try to build up a community where he lives in Alabama. He he normally comes, and he told me he would have come, but that was the only time he could get his game store spot to do. It was sort of like a league type turn of learning tournament, right? Yeah, and that was the only time he could do it. Uh, 
It's the other Scott from o- Oklahoma City had like a wedding or something he was yeah. in. Yeah, he was all gung ho, and then he found out the the wedding. Yeah. He's like, ah. Oh. Because he came down, uh, you know, before. Right. But I, I caught a bunch of new guys from Dallas uh, that w- had never come down before. I mean, Mark comes every year, but he's one of the guys that's come all three years mm-hmm. um, from Dallas. Um, oh, he's from Denton. So uh, okay. it's like yeah. a 45 minutes north. <laughs> um, Dallas, DFW area. <laughs> Denton's um, a different town. <laughs> but we caught three new people from the Dallas area that had – uh, none of them had come to my tournaments, and only one of them had been to your tournaments before. Yeah, Tim so. came to ours. He's really into it. And we it. had uh, Ben and Matt came down together. Yeah. Uh, and they were uh, they, they had a really great time. And I think we'll we'll catch them for hopefully some of your tournaments too. Yeah. Um, who was it, Ben, that set up uh, Diablo Bowl? Yeah, ben, Ben's working on Diablo Bowl uh, with the first weekend in August That's in right. uh, yeah. Dallas. That's right. Yeah, it's um, the weekend after Emerald City. Whoa, whoa, before we get too okay, far sorry. off topic, we were yeah. talking. We were the build up was where this place has been hosted in the previous yeah. years. Oh, let's let's not forget track. Wonkos. Yes. So uh, <laughs> new home. Third year comes around. Um, I've been really good friends with the owner of a local game store called Wonkos uh, here in Austin, um, and recently he doubled the size of his space and. The vast majority of the the play, he basically knocked out a wall is is game tables, and he told me he's like you could have the, the, that space all day. So I was like, man, and that's we awesome. did all and day. He, he charges me nothing. He kicked in. Uh, he he did a deal with Battle Foam. He kicked in a Battle Foam bag to to raffle off for the tournament. Um, his store is awesome. I mean, it, yeah, it, it, it was a little bit on the small side before he did this expansion. Now he's got tons of space. Um, he does a lot of action figures, board games, big in the Warhammer. Um, there, he's a huge Magic store. Uh, Friday Night Magic is absolutely insane in that store. He gets like over a hundred guys in that store for Friday Night Magic. Let me tell you what he's huge into: uh, Gundam models or whatever. Oh, it was right. <laughs> midday in the tournament, and it, the place got taken over by these model makers, and they were just like a frenzy mob of people putting together models, and then all suddenly they left. Yeah, After I didn't about get that two at hours. all. And they were so, like teenage boys, old men, hot girls. No, there wasn't. There was no old men. No, there was no hot girls. There was girls there. There was a girl. Yeah, there was girls. Yeah, there was a girl. I think. I thought there was girls. I take that back. I think there was more than one. Okay, they weren't hot. You wouldn't. Have, you wouldn't have sampled the goods. I would not like to continue this conversation. Okay. I'm married, so I'm not commenting at all. Good answer. Some of them were Asian, so. Um, I didn't lump them in. Yeah, into... that, I don't think he, oh. Eric actually knew they were meeting there. Oh, okay. This, that was an impromptu thing. I, well, it felt I like think a flash. He posted mob. them on a semi regular <laughs> basis, but I don't think they really tell him when they're going to meet up there. They just sort of meet up there because I think, in general, because he has so much room, Saturdays isn't a problem for them to set up. And sure. anybody that doesn't know, these are these Japanese robot models that go anywhere from like six inches to what, about 18 inches tall? Yeah. And, and they build them, and the, these guys, I went over and looked at them. You guys, I was the only one, because I, I was free that one game I didn't play. Um, I was able to go over. I mean, they seemed like they were fabulous. From guys who build models, they were fabulous model builders. Sure. But I totally don't understand the fascination with that hobby. It was really not my thing, but it was fascinating to watch them. Yeah, but if they, each one of them bought a model at that place, that's a lot of money for that place. Oh, heck, and those things, like the little teeny tiny ones start out, 20 30 bucks and the mm-hmm. big ones were hundreds of dollars for the really big ones that were really super fancy and stuff i mean those it's a big hobby i mean that was like the austin gungan club or whatever they're called i mean hmm. that was or built uh, builders thing or something i forget what the well, name of that as that interesting as was. that was it, it's not blood bowl so. yeah <laughs> so anyway uh eric has this awesome space in wonko's and he gave it to me for the whole day we did we did get squeezed we didn't really get squeezed i mean they just took over a corner we weren't using yeah, we're and good. set up all these models um i did have a lounge in the front there where i had a big couch to sit on um he he has long-term plans to open a coffee shop in the front of the edition really? um and have it open early in the mornings just as a coffee shop when the game store is closed and then service the um, the store later in the day through the coffee shop. Well, I, so that's I, that's where that counter in the where I had the trophies and the couch mm-hmm. was up front. That'll be the coffee shop. That'd be cool. Right. 
Well, I really liked the location. I enjoyed that it was right across the street from a Lone Star Kalachi place. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, the weekend of Kalachis. Dude, that was way better than even the Kalachi factory. And I'm a big fan of the Kalachi factory. So I don't want you to move the location. And I want to get twice as many Kalachis as I did this year. So I do not, unless you know there's an act of God, I do not plan on <laughs> moving the location. Because three locations in three years was plenty. Uh, and I would love to find a home, uh, you know, so as long as, uh, you know, Eric's got the space available, I definitely want to have it there. Yeah, it was That's a true. it was a very nice store. And coming from a game shop where we always host ours, it's so funny just to travel a few hours away and see totally different games that he probably carries normally and sells normally are stuff that we don't ever sell because, you know, we Number one, we don't carry them. We don't carry them to even sell them. But yeah. it was just nice to get a different perspective of a different game shop. And, of course, I think a lot of people spent money in there and tried to support the store and show him that I we I spent a lot more than I should have on something I just didn't need. Yeah, I spent, I spent a good – I think I Isn't dropped that 50. every game store? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, yeah, great location. Um, great time was had. Uh, do we know who won? Do you have a listing of who won everything? Uh, yeah, I do. I have it uh, pulled up right here. Um, so uh, uh, the the overall champion was Michael Lewis uh, from Tulsa. Hangs out with you guys. He had a, um, an undead team that was made all from uh, Reaper's uh, Bones miniatures, and that was the name of the team was the Reaper's Bones. Um, and, and you guys would probably agree he's probably one of the nicest guys you could ever imagine playing a game of blood bowl with there's a reason we take him everywhere we go yeah <laughs> i mean at this point he's going to go with us to any blood bowl tournament we go to because he's just a cool dude if if anybody um has seen uh, a lot of the pictures i posted on facebook most of those are him he also took pictures of everything yeah and, and of all the winners at the end he took he all does the that all, every year for us too yeah, even the the first time we guy. had Oklahoma Bowl was just like, you you want me to take photos for you guys? Sure, stranger, go ahead. Yeah, he, um, he's so a nice guy. Kind of, he's he's kind of become our uh, what I thought Alan would become on our podcast. I thought Alan <laughs> would be our third wheel, but Michael Lewis has become our uh, he's our crush to our demolition. Um, just to kind of lead up into this as because I although I played in three of the four games. Um, I, I played this year. I played goblins, and I just played them to have fun. I didn't even really attempt to win. I, I just and I got to play Michael Lewis in the first game, and I actually did try to give him a game, but uh, you know, goblins you can only do so much. And I I had a screwy build that had Roddy in it and all the secret weapons. So most of the second half, I wasn't field more than like Four eight people. or nine <laughs> players by the start of the second half. So what you're games. saying is you the organizer through your first game against the guy I, who I won do not the throw tournament games i have a build that makes it uh, very very challenging for me to win a game i see how that's it how is. i will say it i do not try to lose the game <laughs> i try to handicap myself uh because I, I don't i just don't really want to win an award in my no, i understand this is my and and uh, there's no knock on anybody else this is a, it's a personal decision you make and i just i, I don't really want to challenge for anything and I actually technically challenged for the Stunty Cup. study cup, but uh, Kent crushed me in the last game with his study. <laughs> so uh, he legitimately won this, the study cup heads up against me. We were the only two study teams at the tournament. Um, going into that last round, though, to get, get back to the build up here, um, I was so excited because for once going into that last round, um, because I don't play that protected table one. Um, I don't think we play enough games really to warrant doing that. Whereas at like uh, Chaos Cup, there's six games, and I think you do separate enough. Right. Um, I just don't think the separation is there to really not give the table two and three a chance to play for overall. And, you know, I went down, we were down to almost table four, I think, where everybody had a chance, at least a long shot to, right? I think it was the top six players and maybe the seventh player if something really went weird. Um, could get into you know winning overall. So I was really excited. Although I had to play that last round, it was really fun to keep an eye on those top three tables because right away, uh, um, you know, some of those games were going really weird ways, and I knew like strange things could happen. Yeah, I'm pretty. I, I think there were like 
if I recall right, number three through number six all had identical points after three rounds. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure Michael won because he pitch cleared his last opponent. He got a ton of bonus points. Yeah, he basically had to do what he had to do, and he did. Yeah, I think he had 28 points wherever or whatever it was. I think third place through first place was separated by four points. Is yeah, what yeah. Getting at. I think overall in the tournament, he had like the third highest amount of bonus points oh, yeah, I think of so. any player. And there were several people. I think he had 16. Now, that was out of a possible, let's see, there were 10 a game, 12 with turning in. Uh, well, this is not a math podcast. Yeah. Nobody yeah, it cares. was like it was like there was like I think 49 or 50 total board points, but they're right. kind of hard to get. Like you got to turn your list in on time, which I think all but two people got, got to finish your games on time. And then, you know, all the screwy things in the game to get your points for scoring touchdowns and or casualties or whatnot. Right. Um, so it was really tight at the top, I guess, going back on topic. It was really tight at the top. It was really fun to watch those games, um, play out. Um, you know, there were some weird things happened in those top tables, um, but uh, it was really – it's kind of what you want as a tournament organizer. You want that last round to really matter and, and people really go head-to-head. Um, you know, in that last game, um, I think you – had had you played Tim before head-to-head in a tournament, uh, Scott? I, I played him the first year at Rock Cup when we tied each other. Yeah, so that was – in in uh, you, you beat him this time, and, and he's probably, you know – one of the best players in our our local league here in Austin, and uh, you know he's gone up, and I he's always I think. Did you beat Tim or Dean? I beat both. You oh, beat okay. them both back to back. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. I was I mean, thinking that, last round. Sorry. That was that was a tough last two games. I mean, I definitely, you know, I know you've said that, but that was that was really a rough last two games. That's two really really good players you had to play against um to to finish out but the other thing that was cool in the tournament is by the end of either by the end of the second round there were a whole lot of what i consider to be the top players in the tournaments that had a draw and i by after the going into the the fourth Speaking round of dean, nobody was undefeated dean had a draw first round yeah against Ooh. someone's slon team he really? did i know was i was yours? incredibly impressed that i pulled that off <laughs> and he beat you up a little bit, if I remember right, even. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. but All right, the rest of the awards, please. Second place. Okay, so uh, second was Brad Wales uh, with Orcs. Uh, he was runner-up. And then, of course, in third place, Mr. at Delson his own Cup. request that I add a third-place award to the tournament. <laughs> and he won it. <laughs> um, and this is where my kind of screwy names start for my award. Uh, third place is called This Ain't My First Rodeo. And that went to Scott. Yay. And he, he had a you had a really good day. I mean, that was the first, second, and third was separated by I think four points. Yeah, so, c- congratulations like, to Michael Lewis. But I didn't have to play the Goblin team. I played the toughest schedule and won on top table. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Actually, I actually I knew I didn't have a lot of bonus points. Yeah, and I was scared when Michael finished before me and he maxed out. But when I won, I thought, well, I at least got second. Mm-hmm. I, I think I remember distinctly during that fourth game, I was like, hey, Scott, you better get a lot of bonus points. And you saying, like, shut the hell up. You're bothering me during my game. Well, there was no that way. Sounds to get, about right. There was no <laughs> way. I had to get the win first. So there was no way I could worry about bonus points. You just got to w- try to win your game. And then but just. If it happens, it happens. Odd scenario happened on the second table. So. But, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think I was going to get leaped for a second. But it is what it yeah. is. So. No biggie. Um, I was happy yeah, with my record regardless. I mean, you played Dwarves, Chaos Dwarves, Undead, and Chaos Dwarves again. Yeah. Like I said, I, mean, that's, I was that's, happy with my record, so I'll, I'll I'll take a chance at going three three wins, one tie, and we'll see where I, where, where I fall in the first, second, or thirds. <laughs> so. I mean, you didn't uh, – um, Steve, you didn't even really have an, an easy ro- oh, you know, no, road to go either because you went through Dean's Undead. You played Brad Wells' orcs, uh, Mike Carpenter's orcs, and then uh, Pat's Undead. I mean, that is yeah. that is no easy day either. No, and I just happened to... I did win one. I did much better than Slon than I thought I would. I was very happy, but I would have been happier with, you know, anything. Yeah. <laughs> but, and the rest but, uh, of the... I mean, you finished, what, middle of the pack-ish? I think so, yeah. Slon? But I was happy. 
So um, just to kind of round out uh, the awards, uh, Dean Piper had most casualties. Tim Haar had fewest touchdowns given. Um, I th- were you the only touchdown he gave up in, that day? Yeah. Um, ben Burns, who was uh, new to Rock Hub, came down. He had this absolutely beautiful, beautifully painted um, – Skaven team and I've I've known Ben for a really long time. We played a lot of Warhammer Fantasy together and we it was kind of a tournament circuit in Texas that we would go around and play and he's his I mean his NAF name is Ben the Rat, so he's played Skaven in Warhammer Fantasy. It surprised me not even at least bit that he brought Skaven to the tournament. Right. Uh, that's definitely his thing. Um he he got uh, fan favorite for his team and he scored the most touchdowns shockingly with Skaven. <laughs> scored the most touchdowns. Um, James Lowe, who was another rookie, he got the Desperado Award um, for most casualties from foul, secret weapons, or crowd surfs. Uh, K-Ref Kent uh, got running with the big dogs, which is best, best sunny team. Um, Matt Mayer, who was uh, a, a, the guy who came down with Ben from Dallas, um, he got a uh, favorite opponent, um, and he was another rookie. I mean, he that poor guy sat on the last table up until – round three where he won a game and moved up to like table eight or something and then lost again. <laughs> and he had his te- and he had so much fun. He thanked me so much after the tournament. And I always feel bad when you come and you just get your teeth kicked in again and again and again. And he had so much fun doing that. So I was really kind of happy. And he got favorite opponent from every person he played that day. Good. So I, I know I've had some questions like, Oh, people always vote for the, the person that, they played last, but I think if you're really a truly somebody you would go out of your way to play against, um, then you, you will get that first place vote. You know, mm-hmm. so I make everybody rank their favorite opponent one through four, um, you know, first favorite opponent, second favorite, third favorite, fourth, and it's no knock on the fourth favorite, but you know, I'm like, Hey, you got to pick, put them in the order that uh, right. you like. So that was fun. Um, uh, poor Mike Carpenter after having a really good show at, uh, what was the tournament you guys he came up for by himself up into oh, uh, Critter Bowl? Critter Bowl, yeah. Critter Bowl. I mean, he had a really good showing there, and he was he was kind of one of my dark horses. I was picking to to take a run at the tournament. He came in dead last. <laughs> my game against him was the only game I won, and I did not fail a leap or a dodge all game. And I, I it was that's, insane. And that's we were making jokes about went. it to the end. It's just like there's no way I'm going to fail this. Did not fail it. Okay. I mean, Caleb didn't have a good day, and Caleb couldn't do anything. <laughs> Caleb had had a horrible day, and he played him in the last round, and Caleb crushed him in the right. last round. <laughs> like, nothing went right for poor Mike No, that, that whole day. That happens sometimes. So, I mean, oh, I guess but, looking back overall, I think it was a, a great success. I think I have the rules kind of in a happy place where I like them. Um, I've gotten uh, down – where I can run the tournament. I really didn't like this year having to play. I pl- ended up playing three out of four rounds because of yeah. people who I, we had an odd number to start. And then I had a person drop after the third round or if the second round, which meant I could sit, we were even again. And then a guy dropped after sort of, I knew the guy was going to drop. He told me ahead of time after two rounds and I was like, yeah, all right, that's good. Then I won't have to play. And then somebody else dropped after the third game. So I had to play the fourth game is really hard. Even that first year, I think I rounded out to four, I think I rounded off the 14 the first year where I was the 14th player. It, it's just really hard. I mean, that that's some advice. I know you guys have this awesome tag team where it helps, you know, one of you guys, time. you alternate tournaments even throughout the year who, who runs and who plays. Um, it's really hard to do both. If you get more than uh, eight, ten players, yeah. I can't see how you can effectively do it. And, and then at least do what I do. Take something that's really fun to play that's not going to challenge your mind too much. Um because you're just not you're going to be thinking about everything else and sure. there's just i don't see any way i mean maybe some people are more gifted than i am mentally but yeah I can't you just got to find yourself a buddy down there that you can split time that, with. that's what i was going to say is uh that, that'd be the one thing i recommend is rock cup grows find you a partner that you can rely on like a like a cant or whoever yeah um and then just kind of have a gentleman's agreement like you know we're if gonna... it's even they play and if it's odd they sit out right and, and you know you're you're right. At a, or whatever. Uh, my experience is is about twelve is yeah. okay to run and play, and anything over that it gets a lot harder. Well, I, that was the number I had in my head too. Twelve. Yeah. So, but I mean, 
you'll learn and as you grow. We all do. I mean, you got to yeah. run the tournaments to to grow the tournaments, and, and also if it's a smaller tournament that doesn't have as many prizes or things aren't as important, then well, that's true. You too. don't have as much stuff going on. Yeah, usually there's not as many drawings and all that either. So yeah. you have a little bit more time to do that. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely uh, you know things I can improve on. One, um, I think the fact that I had to play and I don't have a backup. There's several wards where I don't really need the result out of the last game that I still had to count like after the last game. Mm-hmm. So that that takes a lot. Of, like um, for the 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 fan favorite team, which is you know everybody votes on which which team they like best for whatever reason, conversions, paint, theme, whatever. Um, like th- that takes a while. Yeah, I'm um, normally doing the, that stuff th- during the one the for favorite last opponent. Round. That takes a lot of time to count. And I pro if I wasn't playing in the fourth game, I could have counted everything except the last game. So I was just adding the last game, and I could have done it a lot faster. Um, and if I had an assistant, somebody else could be doing drawings while I was going to do it. I, you know, you sort of get attached. I mean, you guys were always sort of tag teaming. I've somewhat become attached to it. And you're like, oh god, I, mm-hmm. I'd have to release some control over my tournament to to bring somebody in. But I think it would improve the overall experience of the players. Yeah, that's um, the beauty. We never argue or have any conflict, and we just kind of go with the flow. Steve's looking at me. <laughs> no, I mean for the no, most part we don't. No, but yeah. I get what you're saying. We've never had the time that we ran one on our own for the most part. No, but we have had issues that we you have to you have to learn when to yeah. let things be and let not be. And probably if I ran this turn, if I ran the tournaments we have with somebody else. Probably, most likely, our personalities would clash. Mm-hmm. I'm saying sometimes me and Steve even clash, but we know each other well enough where it's like, well, Scott's a turd in that area, <laughs> or Steve's yeah. going to see my way eventually, and then later I can go see, I told you, mm-hmm. and he's like, yeah, you're right, next time we're going to do it different, and we just move on. So it is hard to find that trusting partner. I think Johnny and Extreme also have this, where they can kind of tandem tag team stuff. Actually, those guys have a really good core with, like, I know Mike Valder yeah, comes out. And a lot of people up there out. do it. They have a really tight knit friends group where they can, from the outside at least, you mm-hmm. know, not get into any big squabble. Yet Unfortunately, still. with our area being so large, there's very few people who actually run tournaments. It's getting bigger. I mean, yeah, we've yeah. got well, what six in the scars now. Yeah, it's it's good stuff. Surprisingly, I mean, and if there's two leagues in Houston, if we could ever get those guys to get their act together. There's at least one good tournament can be held in Houston. I know Brad keeps talking about it, but it's just a matter of doing it. I think I mean, next they had the year. Alcon Cup um, uh, last year. Three, three years ago? Two, no, it wasn't last year. No, it was two, it was two or see, three. It was a long time. It was two years ago. Let yeah. me look at my champion certificate here. So uh, 2013. Let us not care <laughs> that much. <laughs> I won that massively large tournament with like eight players. Yeah. yeah. Was... Hey, a tournament wins a it's tournament a win, win. A win. Yeah. Just take it because. You know, you never know when the last one's going to be. So, well, Matt, we appreciate you guys, you coming on, you guys. And you, you're for sure doing this again next year? Uh, definitely doing it again next year. Hopefully having some more help uh, and, to run it. But I, I don't see any reason why I would not do it next year. And it's going to be a part of the Scars and around April? Uh, and I'm so excited about Scars. I, yeah. I feel bad. I just I don't see how I could get up to the one in uh, Kansas, but I'm gonna try to get there. All the other ones. That's uh, part of the thing. Uh, Kansas didn't come down to you, so uh, well, yeah. that's what everybody has to realize. Scar is a is a a bonus if you can make them all, mm-hmm. and if you can't, it's still feasible. I mean, golly, Brian too still like in one of the top <laughs> spots. He's like yeah. one, one point out of the lead. He could come down and play one more tournament and win, <laughs> no problem. So I mean, it's not really to punish anybody or to, and that's how everybody. Our states are going to have to just look at this. Mm-hmm. Is it's just a it's it's great to have the event. Let alone if you could make, you know, if it ever grows to eight, if you could make six out of eight, that'd be amazing. Yeah, you know, yeah. and um, so I think it's a cool thing. It's a nice beginning, and uh, I'm really excited we'll, about it. We'll keep building on it with our anchors of you know, like Oklahoma Bowl, Spiky Rock, Rock Cup, Cup uh, Nuffleween, and then hopefully we'll have you know. Many more Emerald City Cups, more Diablo Bowls, everything else, mm-hmm. and like a Houston Bowl or whatever starts birthing. And we stuff, still so. got to tap into San Antonio too. I have friends down there, and I every year like, oh, we're going to come up, so we we got to get maybe something going in San Antonio too. That'd well, be there cool. There you go. So it, it, it will grow. Been. Oh, it's a nice area. Yeah. So, well, Matt, thank you again for coming on, and we appreciate you running everything for us, and uh, we look forward to it next year. So I guess I will see you guys at Diablo Bowl probably. 
If I can get a sitter for my children, I will be there. Is that I will like be the there. umpteenth tournament in a row that's your weekend with your kids? No, actually, I've uh, I've uh, wheeled and strong armed some people to kind of change events to the weekends <laughs> I don't have children, and so far it's only Rock Cup's been in the way. So I've been blessed that people have been kind of working around my schedule. And technically, Diablo Cup was on a weekend without your kids. But it was also the same weekend as Emerald, so we got that changed. <laughs> so we got that changed in part of Scar. So we'll see. We'll see what we can do. But yeah, you'll probably see us for Diablo. Either Ball. there or Chaos Cup, right? That'd be the next absolutely game. definitely. I'd so see you guys in person. So all right, man. Well, you take care awesome. and have a great hey, night. Thanks for having me on, guys. All right, bye bye. All right, bye. All right, so it's that time where you get to do your stupid little thing that everybody likes. Shout out! That would be it. Shout out time. Yep. Who we got? Um, I would like to thank myself for another great month of the year of Prime. God, I wonder if I can just cut that out. Probably. You need to start poo-pooing everything. You need to be happy. The Cubs are doing well this year. Yes, they are. Uh, you got to see Mad Max? Yes, I did. It was very A good. A two-hour explosion. Pretty much. Two-hour and ten-minute explosion. If you haven't seen Mad Max, go... See Mad Max. If it you have will, a choice between Avengers and Mad Max, go to go see Mad Max. And I'm not going to say it'll put hair on your chest. It'll probably put balls in your chest and put hair on those balls. Then those balls will explode into tiny cherubs. Then then there'll be like an army of lemmies from Motorhead <laughs> singing O Fortuna" as they uh, dance around and fly and. Bib Fortuna. O Fortuna. O Fortuna. Yeah, not, it was intense. Did you tense up during the movie? I, I could I could feel myself sitting there with a the dopey smile on my face. Okay. I was like... <laughs> the first time I saw it, I looked down, and I was actually gripping my own hand. And I yeah. was like, this is stupid. This is just a movie, because it was so intense. So good. And then tonight, when I saw it with you, and uh, took my girlfriend with us, and uh, she was holding my hand, and at times, she would tense up and like squeeze, and I was like, okay, then I'm not the only one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, good stuff. Yeah. Really good. I hope... I hope that guy lives long enough to at least make one more. It's already in the works. So Is it really? Mm-hmm. Crazy movie. Crazy so movie. So good. One of the movies I'd actually really like to see how they made all that crap. Yeah. So, anyways, if you haven't seen Mad Max, go <laughs> see it. And let's do some shout outs. Okay. I'd like to thank you, Steve, for putting all this together and You're working through all these problems welcome. that we've been having with weather. And, and computers and yeah, all yeah. this stuff. No, first let's uh, give a big thanks to Eric at Wonko's Games down in oh, Austin, Texas. Very much so. Uh, he provided a very nice environment. Uh, he was super nice to all the guys. He was a game shop that appreciated us. Yeah, in the store. Yeah, it was amazing. It wasn't like we were bothering <laughs> him. It was he was very thankful, and he actually told me he's like, I'd really like to get those Austin the. Austin League to start playing at my store more often. Yeah. But I guess he's more on the north side of Austin. So think about it, Austin guys. The guy wants you there. So start up a new league with uh, random skills. There you go. And we'll send down dice. We would. We'd yeah. send out free dice. No problem. Total random skill league. They'd come up with something like, well, we do that on the four skill. <laughs> um, we'd also like to give big shout outs to uh, Matt McDonough and uh, Michael Lewis, who came on the podcast, kind of a, a semi-late notice. Yeah. I mean, well, we warned him three weeks ago. <laughs> and then we tried to schedule him But to record weeks ago. him tonight, it was kind of a late notice, so we'd like to thank them. You want me to just keep going down the list here? Uh, I want to give a shout-out to Sean Burke for what he knows what. Oh. <sighs> Is da, it da, a da, big da. surprise? We're getting married. Oh, wait, no, we're not. Oh. Yeah, I don't know him. But I wanted to be a bridesmaid. <laughs> Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. I know. But uh, now nah, he's uh, helping out with something. So Helping out with something. And I'm helping out with something. Ooh. It's all a little something, something. Uh, we'd like to give a shout out to uh, Jim Luft, the uh, guy who controls the Blood Bowl bo- blog. And, and did, Lord uh, Borak. Lord Borak. And so, you know, he's Lord Borak's manager. And Lord Borak made an appearance at the They Might Be Giants concert. He did? Do you, you were wearing him. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I tweeted. Oh, never mind. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I was wearing the Hooky Bowl t-shirt. <laughs> Love that shirt, by the way. It and, is awesome. Uh, Jim, I'm going to maybe contact you if I remember to find out who did your screen printing and stuff. So we need to talk. And uh, if I don't contact you, listen to this and contact me. Yeah, that'll work. Um, let's see here. We got Jonathan Mary, who uh, contacted us from South Africa. He's the uh, commissioner of the league, and he runs two separate Blood Bowl leagues in South Africa, and he's going to have them play a championship game. It amazes me that there are two separate Blood Bowl leagues in South Africa, and we don't have one here. <laughs> well, we could fix that. We could, but we're really lazy. He's in South Africa. That's a country. Yeah. We're just in Oklahoma. We're a state. Yeah, but we're probably close to the same size. No, South Africa is pretty big. They I'll have, have to look that up. Okay, you, you do that, uh, Jonathan Mary. Though he sent us some um, his, some of the league rules, which I'll be honest, I haven't read through them yet because I just saw your email. Yeah, we today. just got them, so. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, he likes to in- encourage fluff. He said that he was going to have to approve of team names, and it's it's like a location mascot. You know, similar yeah. to the NFL and or how most sports leagues are. So yeah, exactly. Hats off to you guys, and good luck with everything over there, Mr. Jonathan Mary. Uh, we were contacted by a, uh, do I need to say this guy's name? Mr. Adrian Churchman? You just did. So. Okay, so if I wasn't supposed to say your name, I, I didn't. No, it's fine. Uh, he was already mentioned on another podcast. Well, they just, that just happens sometimes. Yeah, we would have been first, stupid tornadoes. Maybe we're saving the best for last. See, they're true. saving the best for last. I gotcha. We'll, we'll get his name right. Anyways. Though. We'll get his name right. That's true. It's Alex Turpin. Uh, he's the commissioner of um, the Huntington or the Huntington, Huntington, Huntington anyway, go on. District War Game Society Blood Bowl League. Uh, he's been commissioning this league for 10 years now. So long. That we're getting kind of close, but. Let's give all Alex right. this credit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's the commissioner there. He, he's They're super fluffy. Super fluffy in everything they do. So hats off to him. And uh, we wish your league the best of luck. And, uh, he, you know, Alex told me kind of in a separate email, even though he's like, yeah, we're going to try to go random skills. So, Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, if we were a different type of podcast, we'd have a drop in from uh, Despicable Me. With a little kid just going, it's so fluffy. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, we don't do that. We could have you do it in post-production. No. You're not going to. Oh, no, 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 no. You're very lazy, sir. Uh, I do a lot anyways. Don't need to be doing that. Well, maybe you need to step up your game. It takes it away from to the... this podcast. Oh, click. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'd like to give a shout out to... The uh, Super Secret Contest is finally over. I think it's been going on <laughs> Three, since... Three, four months? Maybe since January or February. Okay. Was it going on before Oklahoma Bowl? I don't know. It's been going on a while. Um, I don't even know where I actually put it, but I put a secret word on like the website or something. It was in the metadata on the website. I, I told it told somebody to uh, uh, email us that Steve loves dongs. And I thought that would be really funny because I know Steve gets email alerts on his phone. Mm-hmm. And I wanted him just to get inundated with all these things that just said, Steve loves dogs. And him go like, why does everybody hate me? <laughs> but he found out about it pretty quick. And then it wasn't such a big deal. Steve's anal, not donkey. <laughs> <laughs> Steve likes anal is what he's saying. I, I'm just, I just take note of things sometimes. So I had a number that I was looking for. And um, hats off to Christian, who used multiple email accounts, but had the same picture icon. So I knew <laughs> it was him every time. I can't remember his last name, but the uh, gentleman named Christian tried to get separate entries for himself. Smart. I mean, he tried, yeah. but he needs to change that icon because it was the same icon. Well, they still his. counted, didn't they? Because it got up to the right number. Um, because we kind of were running low on people who wanted to end the contest. Well, I... I think I did count them because I don't know. I, yeah, he worked very hard for. Yeah, it, but he was not the winner. Um, the winner of the contest is Anders Jansen or Janssen or Fast Ben Jansen from the Reekland Reavers. <laughs> Second edition fluff. Maybe Anders is related to him. 
our buddy Anders. Yes. Who's come over several times for Chaos Cup. And uh, I would just not call him just another guy from Sweden. I'd call him a brother that lives across the ocean. And a true lover of White Castle. Does he love White Castle? I don't know. I'm pretty sure the last time we went there, they're he both loves like, to swim, though, is dude. this food? <laughs> yeah, you think this is food? <laughs> well, well, you, you, you kind of have to understand where we're coming from. Yeah, I mean, come on. He does love to swim. Yes. He'll go take a swim right in the morning. Yeah. I'm not a problem with it. He's also good with hugs. And <laughs> he loves hugs. What was that? That was like I don't a know. weird uh, hug embrace like mimic thing that you did. Like you were trying to act like you were hugging ghost Anders right now. That's pretty good. No, that was just Drew taking over my body. Oh, okay. <laughs> he does that sometimes. Usually later in the night. Oh man, if they come back over for Chaos Cup, I hope I hope I get first pick on that if they bring chocolate. And I hope I can get some of that orange chocolate stuff that I got last time. Oh, you're welcome to that. That mint thing was delicious. Oh, well, you can have all your mint all you want. So good. All that chocolate was pretty dang good, though. Well, yeah. It is chocolate. But they don't have to bring us chocolate. No. I mean, if they did, we'd probably take it. But, Mm. yeah, whatever. Anyway, so Anders is the contest winner. He needs to... uh, Contact us. Contact us. And um, if he's coming over for Chaos Cup, we could save a few bucks and just deliver a package... Face to face, it would also is, give us time to figure out what we're giving him, oh, since that part of the contest was never discussed. It's something, it's something cool. I, I have a thought process on this. Okay. Steve, Con- Steve loves dogs. T-shirt, maybe I don't know. <laughs> That'd be funny because it'd be a shirt that you wouldn't want to wear. I know. I don't know who would. And finally, a uh, shout out to uh, the guys down in Dallas who were heavily encouraged after uh, Rock Cup. To uh, start their own Blood Bowl tournament. Yeah. Ben Burns just stepped right up and was like, yeah, I'm doing one. And uh, he got it in in the deadline to make it a part of the Scars tournament series. And he was nice enough to accommodate us with the schedule change so that it's the week after Emerald City right. now instead of the same week. So, if, so. You're, if you're in our area or the United States or Scotland, like Mike Rushby mm-hmm. or England or wherever. Uh, there's we should two- give him a shout out. Or did we already? Oh, we talked about him a lot. Congratulations on his... Uh, He's getting married to a girl. Yes, engagement. Yeah, congratulations to yeah. Mike Rushby. Uh, but if you're traveling for overseas and you want to go like to just like... I'd like to go to a, a couple of tournaments. Great time coming up. You could go at the... Uh, I think it's July 24th and August 1st. You could go up to Wichita, Kansas. Go down to uh, Dallas, Texas. And then in between, you could come by and see us. Yeah. And if you want to stay a, a whole week in lovely Oklahoma City, I don't get it, but you're welcome to. Yeah, yeah. that'd be awesome. Join the Scar Series. Fight for that championship. <laughs> they just come over, win two games, and take <laughs> the whole both thing. Tournaments. Yeah, take it all. I know. We don't need, uh, <laughs> we don't need Brian too to come down because right. he could win it all. And um, I think that's all I have in my notes here. Next week, we tr- we gallivant off up to iowa we sure do we're gonna pick up michael lewis and we're gonna go up to three die brawl and hang out with those guys and um thank you for everybody uh understanding that we didn't want to zap ourselves or fry the computer during lightning storms and tornadoes yeah hopefully we'll be done dodging those really soon yeah yeah but very much so that's all i got for this week man do you have anything that else? is all i have as well So for Scott, this is Steve, and this wraps up another episode of Both Down, the number one global podcast. In Oklahoma. Yeah. (laughs) That was weak, man. Oh, well. I set it up for a spike, and you was like, (sighs) Oklahoma. For Steve Campbell and Scott Delsing, I'm Scott Delsing. Pretty sure that's the first time you've used your last name. (laughs) <laughs> Maybe you should cut that out. Uh, nope, it's staying in. Okay, For we're done. Steve Kilowog and Scott Prime. I'm Scott Prime. There you go. Okay. You can follow both down on Twitter at both down. 
You can follow Scott at Fat Finley, F A T F I N L E Y, and Steve at Kilowog2814. If you'd like to email, their email address is bothdownpodcast at gmail.com. Or for more information, you can visit them at bothdown.com or on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash bothdown. It's the Slurp Cast. Where Scott sits around slurping. What do we have on today's Slurp Cast? Well, we're going to talk about some tatties. No, I mean, what's in the, what's in the cup? Um, water? It's kind of a boring episode. <laughs> yeah, there's ice in it. It's ice water. It's ice water today. God. Cool temperature of 37 degrees. And that, and that concludes Slurpcast. <laughs>